You are about to witness history in the making. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to another Pop Culture Gamers show. It's two weeks gone, so it's another podcast for this evening. Uh, I'm Steve for your, as your host this evening, and as usual, I have Hayden in tow for this time. How are you? Hi, I'm not too bad, Steve. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. A um, bit late starting today because the PC was having its moment, but there you go. That's Windows 7 for you. Let alone it was also it. cheekily playing Destiny on the side. I could see him. He thinks I can't, but I can't. No, no, that isn't actually. That That on that screen, which you can't see, is a game I completed this week. Woohoo! Which so there one? You go. Ah, there you go. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> anyway, so how are you, pal? How have you been keeping? Yeah, not too bad. Um <coughs> excuse me i've um, just um, been doing normal sort of stuff uh, one of the things i've been looking at over the last couple of weeks is as we know from the first of april all of our energy prices started going up mm. so i'm looking at installing solar panels and how far did you get remember we did we did talk about it last week didn't we or uh, weeks ago we did briefly price. well i've got a company coming out uh, to talk to us um, mm. and to do an assessment for uh, our our house so um yeah looking at getting those uh well hopefully in the next few months uh installed because uh, we know somebody who's had two lots of solar panels from this company mm. um they lived uh, by the sea um and uh, you know had it installed a few years back before uh, her husband died mm. and then um she's moved over here to be closer to uh, her daughter and uh, she's installed panels here and she was she's like really you know, th- these are absolutely brilliant and uh, obviously you can have things like batteries attached to them as well so when you're not you know although you're continuously generating electricity over the day um you're not obviously using it all unless you're like you know using a mega amount of electricity mm. uh, so you can actually charge up a battery and then that will uh continue to run uh dur- you know your house during the evening so you're not drawing out as much off um off the national grid i wonder what sort of size that would be sitting somewhere uh, <laughs> just some sort of generator at the back of the yeah you know. no not, not big evidently I, by the sound of it i'm not sure that they're that much bigger than a car battery oh, okay. uh, but, uh, but you get basically you get two one there's a redundancy sort of uh, thing as well but yeah i've learned an awful lot about the about solar panels and how mm. they work and all of that sort of stuff and it's quite amazing because um our friend was showing us an app as well um yeah. and that was uh uh, you know, showing exactly how much electricity that they had. It tells you where problems are on the system, um, and it tells you how much you're giving back. Mm. Uh, you know, so that which you can then get income generation from uh, once you've sort of like charged up your battery. And she was saying that her battery had um, was down to about one percent in the morning mm. when you know because she's only just literally had them installed. And uh, it was a really overclassed, gloomy day. And by lunchtime, it was 50, her batteries were 54% charged. Right. Uh, so hopefully, you know, it'll be uh, really good because, like I said, it was a, you know, it was not a bright day at all. Mm. Um, and obviously, solar panels, the better the weather, the better that they are. So yeah, um, so the cost of them is quite high you know you talk about several thousand pounds yeah was there have you looked into the any government schemes for getting a bit of a... Are, the, the, from none from what i can gather really are available at the moment which you would have thought that there would have been mm. but obviously uh, the chancellor has taken that off them but it was only five percent 
Mm. But even so, when you're talking about seven to eight grand, you're talking 350, 400 pounds mm. off the off the cost. And let's face it, that Tesco slogan of every little helps. <laughs> um, but when yeah. you know, when you think about how much you know our you know, for our house and our electricity is going to be, um, you they reckon that you'll save about 80 percent of your electricity um, bill on um you know we're using installing solar panels mm. uh, at least so and they're pretty much maintenance free and a lot of the equipment's actually it's worked out to be uh sort of um uh, you're guaranteed in cycles rather than in years so like your batteries you know yeah 20 000 cycles or st- something like that but when you if you work it out if you have one cycle a day that's like 20 years obviously if you've got a tesla and you drain your battery um you know you you charge it up and you drain your battery and you charge it up again in the same day that'd be two cycles so you'd half the amount of time yeah so um yeah it's it's definitely something that we're doing yeah because uh we've also uh booked for an extension to our house as well so got a few changes uh, coming a lot of lot of work uh, mm. to be done but at the end of the day it all adds value to the house of course yeah um so you know if uh if and when we do decide to downsize at the appropriate juncture in the fullness of time we'll have uh, more money um to do so and our new build is nearly complete mm. so i'm quite looking forward to that as well so yeah it's gonna you know that's uh, ready for us renting out so there's a lot of change sort of coming at home, but that's sort of been a bit of an abstraction from doing much. Mm. Um, so, and uh, also we also had uh, one of our family friends uh, died on Monday as well. Oh dear. Okay. Um, and we, uh, he was uh, our age. That's scary, isn't it? When you think of it like that, sometimes. Yeah, it is. It is um and uh yeah it's it's just been a bit of a shock Mm. um but you know i'll tell you more about that off flag because it's uh no yeah 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 yeah. yeah. uh you know um so yeah so it's uh it's been one of those sort of weeks really (laughs) (laughs) i can't wait until the end of next week and then i'm off for uh just over a week so i'm just looking forward to when we have that four day break at easter (laughs) (laughs) It's still a little way off, yeah. Yeah. Not many days, though. No, no, no. So what about yourself? So I was out and about this week. I think I've been out and about this week more than I've been in the last two years. <laughs> um, so two years ago, I pre-ordered, well, say two years ago, I booked tickets for War of the Worlds. Yeah. And Simple Minds. And obviously due to COVID, they all got cancelled. Simple Minds got cancelled twice. And they yeah, both ended up being in the same week, which was last week. So it was nice to to go to uh, the BIC. Went there Tuesday and Friday night. And Tuesday night, I went to see uh, the War of, War of the Worlds live on stage. Uh, again, this year. You've seen that before, though, haven't you? About four times. Mm. So this year, uh, it's, the hologram was still Liam Neeson. Uh, but they changed the cast around. So this time... We had um, Claire Richard from Claire Richards from Steps. That ignoring it, that she played, she was in Steps at all. She played her part re- really well as the uh, the Parthens, Parsons' wife. We had someone called Duncan James from Blue. I don't know any Blue fans out there. And um, also Kevin Clifton from Strictly Come Dancing. But then again, from that, that just goes over my head. Uh, Nathan James again was was playing as well and he 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 was in the last show I went to as well he was he was awesome uh Anne Marie Wayne as well on street on stage and on the screen because you have lots of stuff going on in the background on a big screen telling the story mm. <clears throat> and it was nice for the first time for four year four when well, I say four years the, the last first time I saw it was probably back in 2006 and Justin Hayward's come back to play uh, play his part Okay. Which he, because he, if you remember back in the day when this first came out, they did a single called Forever Autumn. Mm. And it was him that was playing that part, singing that song. 
and they do something really different this year although every time we see this they, they tweak the show a little bit there's some nice little um, special effects and changes that they do mm-hmm. and one thing they did do was they and marie wayne and justin Hayward did a duet of forever autumn which was pretty good i sang that very well and considering justin Hayward in his late i think his late 70s now by now he can still sing mm. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, really enjoyed it. We were at the front this time, so we were in sort of block B, not too far. We're about ten seats back from the main stage. Well, but I've, yeah. I've got thinking about you know people being in the music industry for a long time. I've got Elton John in two months. That's right, yeah, yeah and he's this might be his last time as well. It is his last time. It's his last tour. They all Probably. say that. Yeah, no. they all, yeah, they all say that. Yeah. Um, so that was really good. Yeah. What was a pain was getting out of the car park. We were on the seventh floor, so everyone coming out of the bit, it took us about oh, 45 minutes to get out. Mm. But um, and then Friday night, uh, my my wife couldn't make it, so I just went with me um, with her sister anyway, because the three of us were originally going to go. Went to see Simple Minds. Nice. And originally, it was the 40th anniversary, 40th anniversary in 2018 for how they for when they started. But obviously, as Jim Kerr said on stage. Yeah, two years later, that seemed to have gone and been and gone now. But uh, they came on stage, played all their hits. Something they did very, really, really differently, which was good because we didn't have any support. Yeah. So what we had is they came on for about an hour, then then went away again, and we sort of had a break. I went to get another pint, pint of shandy, and uh, they came back on again, did another another hour and twenty minutes or so. So they're on stage for nearly two and a half hours. Yeah. And it was incredible. I haven't seen them since, I could tell you now, the 15th of September, 1982. That's when I last saw them. It's and, amazing that they're still alive and kicking, going back to her. Well, as, as the song says. I know, that, that was why I chose that one for Bum Bum. I know you're Googling their song there, then you know, what can I put in there? But they were really, really good. Jim Kerr was amazing on stage. Yeah. There was someone, I, I haven't got a name to me now, but they, there was... Obviously, the um, Jim Kerr and the guitarist were the original from Simple Minds. There was this, this um, lady as a drummer. Yeah. Wow. Could she play the drums? She was mental as anything playing them. She was fantastic. Uh, but yeah, you know, don't you forget about me. Alive and Kicking, Glittering Prize. God, it was just brilliant. I listened to all those tracks again. And they could belt them out. He was singing. You couldn't, you know, just just banging those tunes out one after the other and he was superb i mean i mean if you're on my facebook i've done a few videos and bits and pieces you might have seen it yeah so a few pictures from that. yeah um they're just fantastic and i see it i've got no more concerts to go to at the minute um i'm dried up <laughs> but i did notice that gary newman is, is got doing the intruder tour at the moment he's coming to the he's coming to the o2 in boscombe which is not far from here and that's in may I know my wife won't go, but I'm sure I might be able to drag my sister-in-law out for that one if we decide to go. Yeah, well, I must admit, I'm uh, not a concert, but um, Ralph Fiennes, mm. you know, the actor M from Bond and Kingsman yeah. and all that, mm. he's doing a play in North Allerton. <laughs> Oh, is he? <laughs> yeah, so I think... Was it Shakespeare like... or anything like that? No, no, it's just a new, new, uh, newly created play, I don't know. I don't know what it's about, but we are going to go and watch it. Yeah. One thing I am going to do this year, um, I've just been, I was looking on on the interwebs today, and uh, I've just noticed that Bewley has got Bond in Motion back for basically most of the year. Mm-hmm. And what they're doing is they're going to have an updated show on display, so they're going to have No Time to Die stuff as well. Yeah. Cool. So you're going to see, you're going to see mm-hmm. the, you know, the Aston Martin with the, big guns coming out the side and stuff mm. so i did mention it but she didn't hear me i think i need to go back to Bewley for another visit and have a look at the uh dis- display for that it's normally sort of 50 it was so it was the, originally the 50th anniversary yeah which is now 10 years ago would you believe because we're coming up to the 60th aren't we well, yeah and uh yeah there was 50 vehicles from bond with also display of gadgets and stuff like that so it only costs about i think 23 pounds ago mm. so i'm thinking of going back there this year maybe one day in the summer when it's nice yeah well in uh a week and a bit mm. i will be going to insomnia yeah 68 
Why are they calling it 68? Is there any reason? Because it's the 68th one. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> My son keeps telling me he definitely wants to go to Insomnia 69 because he's at that age where, you know, it's 69. He. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Bless yeah. him. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, we're going to Insomnia um, for the day. Is that, is that Easter weekend or not? So, yeah, yeah, it's a uh, good Friday. Hmm. That should be quite good then. You get, I don't know what you get to see there. I mean, it's quite uh, a few e- events running at the moment still, this sort of stuff, and Comic Cons and, and bits and pieces. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a gaming festival, so there's all sorts. So there's a lot of YouTubers, a uh, lot of you, you know, you would be developed games and mm. that sort of stuff. There's a, um, they the run a competition for, you know, you do uh, head to head gaming. Yeah. You know, sort of like, it's what we would have called a land party years ago, but, you know, they, they do all that, <laughs> but it's absolutely massive scale. There's hundreds of people in it. Yeah. And people can win prizes, stuff like that. There's uh, cosplay, live, you know, live stage events with, uh, you know, various different speakers and mm. all that sort of thing. So, yeah, we're going on a Friday. Oh, good. And I've ordered him and me to wear our Pop Culture Gamers new design T-shirts. Oh, the white ones? Yeah. Yeah. They're like the baseball sort of ones. Yeah, with the blue arms. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look quite cool, I thought. Yeah. I never like a white T-shirt to a certain degree. So when, so the last these two concerts I went to, I bought a, a Simple Minds T-shirt. And it was all black with the gold lettering in the front and obviously the tour list in the back. I was going to say, it's not exactly simple minds to be anything else other than black, is it? <laughs> and uh, the War of the Worlds is a black one as well, with all the um, signs and stuff, you know, the Martians and everything else yeah. in the front. And again, the same thing in the back with the uh, tour, tour planner for the for this year. Yeah. Yeah, I just saw the, the white made the uh, explosion look, you know, the pop culture game is explosion. Yeah. Like cool. Would it look? I mean, I'd be interested to see how what it could look like in black. I think it'd look all right. It just wouldn't look quite as good because of the some of the shading on the logo. Yeah, because I mean, the original one was the green. And then you got the the blue purple type, isn't it? Yeah. So unless we design a new complete logo <laughs> and try something. Else. Well, but are you there, Steve? I've designed <laughs> the last two. Your turn. Oh, we had input from both. And you have to do it so. in Photoshop. Yeah. <laughs> I get my pen and pencil and crayons out. No nope, Photoshop, Steve. <laughs> Sorry. If you want a new logo, you're designing it. Uh, well, maybe one day if I'm bored. I've got, and yeah, you wait. buy Photoshop and you learn how to use it. <laughs> oh, don't need to do that. You go, you go on YouTube. <laughs> Anything else, mate? No, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, one last thing. Um, last year, I pre-ordered uh, the Sparks Brothers soundtrack from Waxworks. That turned up yeah. this week. And... If anybody is interested to listen to Sparks, uh, I think this album, because it's four albums in one, mm. and it covers all the songs that were in the documentary, uh, I think it's a great box set as such. The design of it as well was really cool because it's it opens up as a as a book, and then you've got each part with a cardboard with the, each album in there. Uh, really pleased with that. The quality of the, the pink marble and the sound is, is really good, the marshalling of the, of the tapes for it. Yeah. Um, and what was even nice to know is that if you've not seen it and you maybe were interested, it's now on Netflix in the UK. All right. Okay. So I had a little look earlier. So, yeah, so the Sparks Brothers documentary is on there as well. I've still been trying to hassle on the Facebook group. I still want to see them. They're coming over shortly to the UK for about four events. Uh, someone I knew did have some spare tickets, but they were in Glasgow. So I don't think I was going to be going there. Bit too no, far, Glas- uh, Glasgow's uh, a little way for you. I mean, it'd be a bit of a way for me, but that'd be uh, a yeah. whole other thing for you. So, because they're not getting any younger themselves, and I've been, I really, really would love to see them, but I don't think I've got going to be seeing them this year. Maybe, maybe if they do another tour at some point. I've got a funny feeling they're bringing another album out at some point, anyway. But it's only London and places like that. So, but anyway. Yeah. That's about it, really. Have you, have you been watching Picard yet? I know the answer's going to be no. I haven't had a chance to watch Picard yet. Jeez. See, this week's been really weird. I've I've had some of the nights to myself, or some of them. Actually, I've been out for two of them, because uh, the wife was out doing babysitting for pets and stuff. But I just come in there, I have me dinner, I just sit there and veg out. I've not, I've not, I didn't even do much gaming. 
Just, just fetch out watching Picard. No, what? I've got to go back to the next. I've got to go back to the season before, though, haven't I? I can't really just jump in. To be honest, I'd, I think you could watch season two without really missing anything. Well, because I, I, I did see about three or four episodes of Picard. Yeah. First season, uh, when they were just getting a ship together. Yeah. I think it was about there, actually. There is a fantastic um, homage. Homage. No, no. Homage. Link. Link yeah. back to the original series, Assignment Earth. Oh, it's what oh, the actual TV show, the episode. Somehow. Yeah, with yeah, uh, with the, the guy with the cat. Yeah, yeah, Gary Seven. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And I have seen something on the interwebs. It's no spoilers. Well, I won't say it on here. But all I'll say is, there's a little throwback to Star Trek: The Voyage Home as well. Mm. Was it in that episode? Was it? Uh, no, that was in last week's. Oh, okay. Yeah, but that was, I saw some photographs and it did make me laugh. I thought, yeah, I will need to see what that was all about. Yeah, but interestingly enough, it's not exactly the same as the voyage home. No, you, if you listen to the words, yeah, it's different. Well, yeah, I mean, what was being said between parties and the conversation, should we say? Yeah. Um, but oh, no, was... no, 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 no. You think about what what is happening in that scene. Yeah. Yeah. The words are different not of what the characters are saying okay all right well i will get this i might even just google it and watch it on youtube mate and just watch that bit it, it, it is it is really funny and it yeah. was a, it was serious i've seen the photo and i see i saw a photograph they did a double tape you know yeah from, from both see what it looks like yeah but it was the original actor yes it was i know yeah i know yeah. i know that yeah yeah so mm-hmm. it did make me chuckle <laughs> made me chuckle as well okay yeah, if we could, um, we'll go straight into gaming this week. Yeah. No longer a dream, but a reality. So, a couple of stories this week. Um, I did see, we were going to chat about the PlayStation stuff. I did see something about that. But tailing the last week, people were starting to talk about it. Yeah, so PlayStation, of, um, well, if you've been wanting to get hold of playstation now i think in some areas they've actually stopped selling it as it were mm. um and it instead links to playstation plus but uh, as we know xbox has been sort of steaming ahead in terms of the subscriptions uh, racket for want of a better term mm. um with game pass which offers great value of money for you know anybody who's uh, using the system uh, well, PlayStation have finally announced their version of Game Pass. So the new PlayStation Plus is a combination of Sony's two current subscription services, those being PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now. So you'll start off with this three levels. There is PlayStation Essentials, which includes multiplayer access to monthly downloadable games, discounts and cloud storage for save games that's still at nine dollars 99 which is month. what what is which is still there at the moment isn't it as it's yeah been, or 59 dollars yeah. 99 a year mm. the next tier is playstation plus extra which includes everything that essentials does and access to a catalog of up to 400 playstation 4 and 5 games that is priced at Fourteen ninety nine a month, or ninety nine ninety nine dollars a year. Okay. And then there is PlayStation Plus Premium, which includes all the benefits of Essentials and Extra, and then adds an extra, an extra three hundred and forty games that includes PS3 titles that can be streamed and some original PlayStation Two and PSP games. Time limited trials are also available, and that's priced at seventeen pound. Oh, sorry, seventeen dollars ninety nine a month, or a hundred and nineteen ninety nine a year. So what I reckon that'll end up being is it'll be probably about eighty five pound a year for the extra, and about a hundred pound a year for premium for us. I reckon. What's your thought on the pricing of this? Because it's a bit can be a bit steep when we've got all these subscriptions running behind us, isn't it? Yeah, it is, it is steep, um, but it, I suppose it depends upon, well, 
how many games that you want to buy as well. Mm. So in in terms of this, as far as I'm concerned, my at the moment my primary gaming console is probably PS5, mm-hmm. um, and that's because um, I'm not buying any more PlayStation, sorry Xbox games because I've bought so many, which have then ended up on Game Pass. Um, I thought, what you know, I, unless it's something really, really specific, I definitely want on there. Like Star Wars, for example, Lego, which would be, you know, a given some to a certain degree. Yeah. Um, then I'm going to just buy it on PlayStation if it's available. If it's an exclusive and I want to award it on Xbox, mm. I will buy it. Um, but for example, I'm um, I'm not um, I'm not bothered about owning Forza because I only play it for a little while, so I'm happy to play it on Game Pass. Well, that's right. I mean, that's all I've been playing it on. So yeah. and the same when the new one comes out, hopefully yeah. in September next year, this year. It will be on Game Pass anyway. So the difference between the PlayStation Extra and pre- uh, Premium and Game Pass is that uh, in-house games, like you know Halo or whatever, you get free from day one. You don't get that with no. Uh, with Some people are a bit miffed about that. Um, I mean, <coughs> I know they've got their own ideas of how they want to play this. Yeah, but, but that, this isn't. That... This isn't. This isn't. How do I put it? This isn't going to be something that's to challenge what xbox do it's a completely different beast it is it is so people think oh this isn't game pass it isn't game pass it's a different idea from sony's point of view and what the hell they want to rock yeah i think that's fine and if i'm from my perspective i would say that i'm kind of i kind of like i'm quite happy with the playstation plus extra and premium I'm not sure whether or not I would actually get premium. I don't have I don't have anything with them at the moment. I don't even I haven't even got live. Yeah, but, you, but it's not your primary console. No, so there's no there's no need. No, um, but for me, I'm gonna you know I'd probably go extra rather than premium because I'm really not that bothered about retro gaming, um, and that to me is where the power in this one on the the premium comes in. If I want to play retro games i've already got the consoles i've already got the games so i'll just be or, or, or there's or there's a lot of got pc whatever. versions or whatever anyway so you've got that haven't you so yeah i've got the pc version of a lot of them unless it's an exclusive so um premium probably unless i can get it as a deal is probably not going to be for me but i like the idea of uh plus extra with the 400 games because that significantly increases the number of games I'll have access to, like Game Pass does. Do you think, though, that uh, I'm going to call them, I'll say, let's, let's, try, let's put a line down the middle between the two. Die-hard PlayStation fans will probably have over the bulk of those 400 games. Probably. I probably still own a lot of those games. Mm. Um, the thing is, for the way that PlayStation have done it, as far as I am as a console user, mm. is... I will still go and buy God of War, Ragnarok or whatever. Whereas I haven't bought Halo, I haven't bought Forza or anything. No. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm and it's probably because the um the the primary sort of uh or you know, um not OAPs, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's it's a Sunday late Sunday evening. Um uh, the 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 the, the primary intellectual rights that uh xbox have mm. and not some of my favorite ones you know i much prefer the god of war and stuff like that rather than uh the halo sort of franchise so you know they've got as far as i'm concerned the games that are more appealing to me you know like the uncharted and stuff like that i know i keep calling it ultimate mountain climbing simulator which it is but it's got a good story yeah, it. but I mean, I own, but I own all of those myself. Yeah. You know? uh, and there's only going to be certain PlayStation games I want to play. I've got obviously, I've got the first Spider-Man, for example. Yeah. Um, but unless there's anything, you know, I, unless it's something I want, I want to, you know, to play. If a new Persona game came out, for example, or there's a new Final Fantasy at some point. Yeah. Well, I mean, I might, probably all of the Persona games will probably be in this lot. Yeah. So. For me at the moment, I mean, I, I like the idea. It will be 
ideal for certain people the same way game passes for sony for um, xbox so although as much as playstation were back on the hills about let's have all these games from the past which xbox have done a great job with bringing all these games tweaked and yeah you know 4k'd up or whatever blah 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 playstation they suddenly decided to say we're going to do something with them whether or not they'll just be i don't think they'll be upgraded they'll just be the games as they are they are because what playstation are doing is reselling you back your yeah which is a bit part. again which is a little bit naughty if you own i mean it's very difficult if you own some of those discs i wonder if you'd be able to just purchase them for free and download them yeah i mean i think that's where sony with for want of a better term their greed um is making microsoft look better mm. uh, because microsoft have, you know if you've got the game and it's on <clears throat> uh, back compact you've got the game on you whatever, own it. yeah exactly. on that system and that's it whereas if you've bought uh, for example final fantasy 7 on a playstation 1 mm. and you've still got the discs um you can't stick the disc in and play the game the way that you could have done if if Final Fantasy 7 and I know it's not but had a been in there but you know you know some of those original Xbox games that like Ninja Gaiden or uh, whatever it was mm. that was on there yeah you know, if you still got the uh, game disc you can stick that in and play it you can't do that with Sony and that's because they sell you this version of a PlayStation 1 game separately which I feel is wrong mm. um it it's uh yeah, it, it just kind of like feels like they're taking your cutlery and selling it back to you. <laughs> I think, I mean, what is nice to hear that Xbox has come out of the doldrums from from where Sony was sort of reaping all the benefits. The, yeah, the, the self-imposed doghouse that they put themselves into because of the incredibly bad decisions that they made. Yeah. Of uh, Connect. Yeah, but they've come a long way from that now. And, yeah. you know, I think it's, it's pretty good. Yeah. And the ironic thing is, is that both systems were effectively the same in terms of they being always online or pre- preferred option of being always online. It's just Sony kept quiet about it and people didn't grumble. Microsoft were up front about it and then people rejected it. Got hammered over it, didn't they? So. Yeah. But yeah, I know. I mean, I wonder, do, here's a question for you because I'm not 100% sure. EA Play, which is now part of Game Pass. Yeah. Is that going to be a part of their plus subscriptions? Do we know? What PlayStation so, Plus? No. Yeah. No. No. So th- there's no PC games in it. No, but EA Play. So what you have obviously on the on, on the Game Pass is you've got all the all those bulk of EA games. Yeah, you've FIFA got Ubisoft and, games now as well, haven't you? You know that are in Game Pass. Yeah. But and and, obviously, what they did is I don't know if they did a deal with them. So. We used to pay separately for it. It now can becomes a part. Yeah, of us. no. As far as I'm aware, that is not included in it. Mm. Um, but but now with Game Pass, have, haven't they also added Ubisoft games in there as well to a sort of like <laughs> extent? Um, the select ones in there. Excuse the clicking. I'm just gonna have a browse. Oh, they were certainly talking about it. Yeah, I can't see. I'm just sort of scrolling through to see what there is. Because you've got the EA Play ones there, like Dragon Age, for example. And and you've got FIFA. Yeah. Um, No, I don't think they're there. I I think, I know they were, subscription-wise, they were thinking of doing their own, own stuff, weren't they? They were. But again, it's how many subscriptions can you can you actually have, you know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, especially with the heating, heating and electricity going up in price. Some, you know. Yeah. Some things have to give at some point. Uh, no, I can't see anything in there at all at the moment. But that's a no. no. But um, yeah. I mean, good luck to them. I mean, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I think it'd be ideal for for people that maybe are just PlayStation as well. That 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 will be right up their street. Yeah, I mean, I'll wait and see what games are added because you know I do have hundreds on PlayStation anyway. <clears throat> mm. And the amount of time I get for gaming now is severely curtailed. I don't know what, don't know why, 
but for whatever reason, I just don't seem to be doing the hours of gaming that I was doing a, a year ago. Uh, do you mean you're actually not getting in your achievements as much as you used to? <laughs> oh, no, I've still got 11,000 achievements in last month. Hmm. But, no, I just don't seem to have the uh, the time quite as much as I did. No. And I've got a couple of things that are potentially coming over the horizon uh, in terms of some other activities that I'm going to be uh, involved with in my local community um, that might be even more of an abstraction. Mm. You know, just trying to give back to the local community. Do you know what I mean? I do, I do. Uh, okay, so one more bit of news, which I think I don't think it's even mentioned it anywhere, is it? A lot. I mean, <clears throat> I came across it the other day. I haven't seen that anyone's mentioned it on the Facebook group anyway. No. But for some unknown reason, as much as we knew E3 was cancelled as a show to go to, we was having it digitally, but now it's cancelled altogether. Just as a thought, because hmm. this hasn't been very well advertised i wish you were this wasn't on first of april that this came out well when <laughs> as I was a bit reading, of a cruel joke yeah because i might i'll give you, I'll give you a great example because uh, i haven't seen i haven't sort of been looking for april fool's jokes but my daughter texted me said she said dad dad tom holland's going to be the new doctor who and i said nah that's going to be an april fool's joke she sort of laughed yeah like, you know because there was an actual news thing for it, but that's, that was that was going to be that was going to be an April Fool's so joke, Christ's sake. To be fair, IGN did release it on the thirty first, so yeah, if exactly. they did, if they did, then it's they're the fools for doing it at the wrong time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, as much as they just released about that, I'm sure there'd be news because Xbox would do a digital show the way Nintendo do, and then you know there'd be something there. Mm. But you can't not have that, you know. It's, it's all. It's always my birthday treat to sit down and watch that, you know. Cause it's always that week when I'm when I'm. But yeah, we'll see. I mean, because there's a lot of stuff we want to think about that'll be coming in tail end of the year. Yeah. And whether they're released or not is another matter. But I think we're going to have a few little events from Bethesda and other companies. Mm. Or just say all those part of Microsoft anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> Yes, probably won't be getting so much from uh, Sony. Well, I'm sure there'll be something there that they may want to divulge and and so on. But yeah, okay. So, should we um, jump into new releases? Yeah. So, um, the new releases for the next couple of weeks, we've got uh, coming on the 5th of April on PC, PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X, Xbox One and Switch is... Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. I think that's going to be a biggie, don't you? Um, I'm hoping so because, uh, you know, birthday present and all that, hopefully. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Let's put it this way I was uh, telling my son where his mother can buy it for cheaper. (laughs) Shot two for 38 quid. (laughs) Yeah, correct. (laughs) Yeah. So, because he was saying, this looks like a dodgy website. I said, it's not a dodgy website. That's where we got your Xbox from. Yeah. Actually, I haven't been on there for a while. I'm gonna have, while we're chatting away, I'm going to have a little nose. But, um... Yeah. So, uh, next, other games that was coming out on the Switch on the 7th of the 4th is Chrono Crisis, the Radical Dreamers edition. On the 12th of the 4th, on the Switch, we've got 13 Sentinels, Aegis Rim. And then on the 14th of the 4th, we've got on a PC and Switch, Cat Cafe Manager and Tournament Souls on the Switch. Hmm. Well, there's enough of these management sim games now. Where are you going to cat running a cafe? Who knows? Yeah. Now you get Fly Simulator and <laughs> I Am Bread and Goat Simulator and God yeah. knows what else. OK, so Games for Gold. So from the 1st to the 30th of April, we have another site. From the 16th of May, sorry, should I say 16th of April to the May the 15th, we have Hugh. We have Outpost, Coloc- Coloc-X, X, which yeah. is 1st of April to the 15th. And from the 16th to the 30th, we've got MX versus ATV alive. None of those spring to mind. Hugh's all right as an indie game. Mm. Um, <coughs> so that one 
is like a platformer and in order to uh, progress a, a through levels you've got to sort of jump and change the hue of the background so it shows other platforms and stuff mm. like that uh it's quite challenging it's not a straightforward easy 1000 gamer score um i quite enjoyed it although i didn't complete it because i just moved on to something else because platformers are not my favorite genre because they're e- either ridiculously easy or ridiculously hard normally yeah yeah there never seems to be you know much in between um and mx versus atv alive isn't that the um quad bike racer possibly if I remember rightly oh okay so game pass so we had the big one mlb the show 22 from april the 5th uh from the first there's some early bundle access that's I presume if you've paid for it mm-hmm. and leaving we have got well I'll, I'll let you say what what's leaving um game pass hayden that's really wound you up a bit it hasn't wound me up a bit because i already have it on steam but <laughs> destiny 2 Beyond Light, Shadow Keep and Forsaken have all uh, left on the PC from my birthday, the 11th of April. Uh, this bundle was already, uh, or the Destiny 2 content was already <coughs> removed from the console library uh, previously, so now the PC is following suit. Fortunately, all of my expansions and everything I bought on Steam. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, it's all a part of Destiny and how they build it. Yeah. So that's fine. So PlayStation Plus, we've got Hood Outlaws and Legends, in addition to Slay the Spire for free through April. PS4 version of SpongeBob SquarePants, Battle for the Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. Yep. I'm sure that appeals to somebody. I'm sure it does. Do you want to do um, probably a teenager, <laughs> but you know? Do you, do you want to do Twick and Twitch and Epic? Twick, <laughs> Twix. Twix. Well, I'm just drinking some water because I'm dehydrated. Yeah, okay. So, available on uh, Amazon Prime Gaming is The Elder Scrolls uh, for Oblivion Game of the Year Edition Deluxe, Plant vs. Zombies, Battle for the Neighbourville, Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion, whatever the heck that is, Monkey Island 2 Special Edition LeChuck's Revenge, Nanotale Typing Chronicles, Guild of Ascension, Galaxy of Pen and Paper and House of 1000 Doors Family Secrets are all available uh, from Twitch from the 1st of April, which is already gone. And then free at the moment on Epic Gaming, we have City of Brass and Total Warhammer. Uh, They're up until 4pm on the 7th of April. And then after that, we have Rogue Legacy and The Vanishing of Ethan Carter, because there is at least one person who doesn't have that game in a pack somewhere <coughs> steve that was given away i think as a game with gold oh well you know. so i'm quite sure you probably got it somewhere but it's a walking simulator if you've never played it yeah yeah that's you know the way it goes yeah okay so this should probably be short but we'll jump into what we've been playing this week eh? yeah do you want to go first well you can talk about your game i was jumping on that one Okay, well, and shall then I? I'll, I'll and then I'll, let, my, I'll do my last one afterwards that I've completed. Which, you know. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about my second game first, and then because we have a link. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, so um, I've been doing a little bit of uh, Oculus 2, Oculus Quest 2 gaming um, because I finally pulled the trigger on Beat Saber. I've been resisting it a little bit because mm. um, I already owned it on PlayStation VR. Me too. But yeah, um, the PlayStation VR is an absolute pain in the backside to set up. I always find that my um, controllers for that are never charged, even Mm. if I sit. I I don't know why, but for some reason on PlayStation, the controllers never seem to charge when the console's off. Yeah. Which really winds me up. Um, So that's, uh, you know, a bit of an issue. So I thought, oh, I'll get it on the Oculus Quest 2. I was quite pleased to see that it said about the content uh, on there. If you did decode Oculus 20, it gave you 20% off the cost of the download packs. I can confirm that also works with the game itself. So I saved 20% of the cost of the game because it's 22.99. Uh, but it plays really well 
on there. There's lots of extras from when I played it on PSVR. The game now includes a multiplayer mode, uh, which you can play uh, with anybody online. I actually had a go at that playing it with my son because uh, he was using his Quest headset and I was using mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's obviously the single player uh, stuff that you can do in terms of individual songs and stuff like that. There is also a campaign mode. Oh, is it? Yes. So I've been battling my way through the campaign mode as well. Mm-hmm. There are hundreds of blooming tracks on this to download from now. Is this going back to the way the old uh, yeah, yeah, plastic guitars were? Yeah, very much so. It's uh, very sort of like rock bandish. Mm. As in, you know, you can buy individual songs at one fifty, or you can buy packs at a tenner. So, um, yeah, been looking at possibly some of those, but uh, I had a go at expert mod. Jesus Christ, I could not do that. Now, there's a good bit of exercise you could have with this, isn't there? There is. I can imagine. Yeah, because um, uh, evidently it actually reports it all to your uh, Apple phone on your health app. Mm-hmm. Uh, to say about all of the exercise that you've actually been doing uh, while playing the game because if you really start going at it it can be really quite exhausting because there's uh, bits where you have to duck under things mm-hmm. uh, you know and jump from side to side and stuff like that uh, so you know it's uh, it's not just swinging your arms about it, there is a, a bit of movement involved in there as well yes because I say with the uh, the PS4 um things that i use obviously on that one yeah same thing and uh, yeah quite enjoyed it to be honest yeah definitely now one thing that you can do and my son being the way that he is mm. uh is doing this i've uh, not tried it yet but there is a thing called side quest mm-hmm. so normally on the quest it's kind of like a inbuilt ecosystem a bit like the amazon kindles are you buy everything from one store but if you use SideQuest, you can sideload software onto them. Yeah. And um, although there are hundreds of tracks to download, <coughs> you can mm. actually sideload other songs onto the uh, Beat Saber to play. Oh, so okay. he's he loves the theme tune to American Dad, so he's done that. <laughs> and what gets me is he's aced it on Expert. I've watched him do it. Mm. Um, you know, and th- there are like custom mods and stuff like that, which he's actually put on to make it harder. <laughs> Nothing like punishment, is there? No, no, definitely not. But it's sort of like, I mean, you know, his age, he's he's got the reactions to him. I mean, you know, I'm a soon to be 51 year old man. It's sort of, sort of like my reactions are not what they were once. <laughs> um, but good God, you know. Being able to do expert hats off to anyone who can do that because I just, and then I switched on expert plus just to see. I think I got three seconds into the song. <laughs> it was sort of like did it did it boom and that was it. Oh really? So it failed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it some some of it is really it's uh, just well you know what Guitar Hero was like on expert. Oh, I love Guitar Hero. Yeah, but let's face it, you know, you had to have really good fast reflexes to do anything above normal because normal was quite challenging on those things. Yeah, and my kids seem were pretty good at that. Yeah, but kids have that that recognition on the side because there was I watched a, a really interesting documentary mm. uh, that was on about um, our processing of time in right. our brains, and uh, it showed. Um, just one twenty fourth of a second, a change in frame um, with an image there. And it said, you know, um, see, you know, keep in mind, if you see an image flash up very quickly, what what is it? Mm. Now, I saw it, but I could barely have enough time to register what it was. And my wife saw it. She, uh, my wife watched the same thing and didn't see it. So, uh, you know, that's how quick it was. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, it's mm. just to do with the way, as we get older, uh, our perception of time moves faster, evidently. I which is so. why days, say, you know, it's why summer holidays and that seem to go on forever. Mm. And nowadays, you know, uh, a weekend feels like you've had a lunch break. <laughs> 
So yeah. do you think you get you do you think you'll play this often or is it gonna something you're gonna get out every now and then? I, th- I think because of the ease of the Oculus Quest, mm. there's no cables or anything. You can just switch it on and launch the game and you're away. I think this is probably something that I'll do probably a couple of times a week. Mm. As just a you know, something a little bit different to sit in and you know, playing the same old sort of games. Uh, just a little bit of variety. <clears throat> Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I think it probably is. I think I will look at doing some of the side quest uh, stuff on it as well. Yeah. To, you know, get some tracks that maybe aren't available um, on there that, you know, I can still play. I don't know. I'll just see see how it goes, see what's available. But, you know, yeah, there's, yeah. Uh, there's evidently quite a lot of sort of like copyright free music and stuff like that that's available, but evidently some like classic stuff and stuff like that as well so might be interested you know like doing blue danube if it, if there is such a track i don't know well if you own that track and could you transfer it so you could well play? it's not just a matter of putting the, the track in is it because it's all of the movements that yeah are relate with it as well mm. but evidently there are different levels of difficulty on it as well is there a wish list on the website for this for the company to say what you want? No idea, no idea. But um, I mean, the, the must they must surely be aware of it as a company. Mm. But it's all down to licensing deals, isn't it? At the end of the day, and that is a big thing these days. Even whether you're trying to put an LP together, um, you know, for licensing, it's you can't always get what you want. And also, some of the licenses have expired, and you've got to hunt down for them. Yeah. Again, that is a mission in itself as well. But, so, cool. Yeah, very cool. So the other game that I've been playing has been uh, Destiny 2. <gasps> Shock horror. Shock horror. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. I actually uh, bought uh, the Witch Queen, and I also bought the 30th anniversary stuff as well. Mm. Uh, but you, how, how, much did you, how much well, did you pay for that, Steve? Probably more than you did for a PC, because PC is always cheaper. Yeah, but how much was it? Uh, Eighty quid? No, I didn't go for the. I didn't. Did I? What did I, thought I do? You got the, you thought you got the collector's or special edition, whatever it was. No, I didn't do the special edition. <coughs> it was the. It wasn't the bog standard. Hmm. So, well, I don't know if it's called that. Is it like the deluxe edition they call it? Maybe. Yeah. So that was about. Yeah. Was that seventy nine quid? And I got fifty, and I got fifteen, fifteen pound off for reward points to pay yeah. for it. So yeah, it might be bad. Well, you, you didn't really get them off because that was fifteen pounds you could have paid on somewhere else, wasn't it? But I've got another fifteen here now. <laughs> I've got to do something. Yeah. So. But um, no, I I actually picked uh, it up on the PC for the Witch Queen was twenty quid, mm. and the thirtieth um, <clears throat> anniversary stuff was a tenner. So yeah, for that, 30 I think, quid, I got the whole lot, Yeah. which I thought was really quite good. Mm. Um, that won't include the seasons, though, will it? Though? Only season at the moment, which is going... No, but the seasons cost you about 750 Yeah, I haven't seen what they cost individually. Yeah, they're, they're uh, something like a 1,000 glimmer, or not glimmer, um, you know, they're paid for currency. Yeah. There's something like that. And as I'm not 100% sure I'm going to invest time right the way through the year in it, you know, playing mm. the seasons the way that you do, I'm quite happy to decide, ah, uh, this season I'm not going to bother and I'll save myself some money. Mm. Or not, as the case may be. Yeah, no, it depends how you want to play the game, really. Yeah, exactly. Until the next season comes, well, the next season's not going to be for a while yet anyway. No, no, there's a little while. So I'm just having a look. I was trying to see. <clears throat> yeah, so yeah, silver. I've forgotten. <laughs> I silver. Think for a minute. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, uh, but yeah. So I just have the. I've I've got Destiny Two, the Bungie thirtieth anniversary pack, which is separate. I think I paid that separate. Yeah. And then I went for the Witch Queen, uh, whatever that would have been, deluxe bundle. Because it included all the whole season for the year. Yeah. So, how have you got on with it then? Well, I mean, we did the Galahorn quest last night, which was quite good fun. 
two of it, half two, half, it was at half one, two in the morning, I think. Half one, two in the morning, yeah. Some very different mechanics in that game, in that uh, quest two. A it's lot good, of the though. Previous stuff. Yeah, it's good. It's for it's a variety. Mm. Um, I mean, it's still at its base, uh, a looter shooter, but, you know, some of the... Uh, the, the different <clears throat> mechanics are quite interesting, especially when, you know, you were having to aim uh, or kill things and then aim it at that big balloon in the centre and stuff like that, mm. uh, which will mean nothing to anybody. Trust me, with that, that's on the 30th anniversary Gala Horde mission. Just have a try of it if you uh, if you want to play that. Um, but progression in it's quite been quite quick for me as well because... I know I'm miles behind you guys, but you've had eight weeks ahead of me. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I started off um, two weeks ago at 1390. Mm. I haven't been playing every night, and I'm now 1520, and I think that's 44 light levels behind you. I'm 65, but yeah, but it's when, yeah. see, I've hit that cap now where, where I'm doing engrams to bump it up a bit it's one or two now it's not yeah. a big so where i'm you'll you will catch up very quickly yeah i mean i've i think i've hit the first soft cap <clears throat> and you're on the hard cap aren't you yeah yeah so yeah and uh i know that prudy's uh further he's another 20 light levels on you he's been he, hitting he's been hitting it mentally um, oh he that's all he plays you know which and is fine but we'll be able, we'll be able uh, to catch up when he's off for three weeks <laughs> yeah yeah he's not going to be around for a little while but, uh, but yeah uh, so yeah i mean i completed the campaign with prudy actually because mm. uh, obviously we've we've now set up the or not set up because it was already set up but shall we say um reanimated mm. the pop culture gamers um discord server so if you want to join that, just come and find us on Pop Culture Gamers. Uh, but we do have a, a a hosts fire team chat, which is exclusively you and me. Yeah. And, fighting, and Prudy's a member of that one as well because he's our other member of the fire team. Mm, so, so yeah, um, but we we do have Destiny chat and stuff like that on there. But uh, obviously, we need people to come along and join it. Yeah, because I say I was. Well, I just had a little chat with, with, with Mark this afternoon while I was playing Trials. Mm. Did really well, actually. I think I, because it's double XP this weekend for Trials, I'll just, I go in on my own. Yeah. And I will join, you know, another two people. And it's, uh, it's the, uh, what you've got is you've got a flag somewhere and you've got to take it over or kill everyone. Yeah. At the moment. And I must have got, six or seven engrams in the in it so all these games are exclusive to trials these weapons mm. and also the armor too and i just remember placing my last trials and because obviously since the up, update on the on the game the guns are slightly different so i've been repurchasing the the same weapons with different traits yeah so yeah but i i played that this afternoon while watching the football and yeah i've been really chuffed i've been picking up a lot of weapons I might dip back in tonight before it finishes, uh, just to do a bit more. Mm. But it just you get some. There's some guns there you can't get elsewhere, and they are really good guns. Yeah, but the more for crucible it. sort of thing rather than no P no PV PV um, E as well. Some of these weapons are really ideal for that as well. Mm. There's some good, good you know, because it, it depends on the perks. Remember. Yeah. So there are <clears throat> perks for for um, crucible or non-crucible you know, within pve and pvp yeah but yeah i really enjoyed that did that this afternoon and yeah one guy i mean i've only had it's because obviously when you're jumping at the randoms yeah uh you've got a better more chance of actually winning a game probably even though i i did do some did pretty well with some kills mm. but what about i did i can't go flawless because i'd never be able to do that no no that but, take a lot but yeah that means you got to you got to win you got to do a kill win streak with those games you're playing mm. i did about seven or eight games uh, which which will win so it really just kept giving me engrams which i could purchase the weapons off of um off of the vendor yeah so yeah <clears throat> so the other game i played is called a memoir blue oh is that a point and click yes it is 
Mm. Yeah, this is uh, on Game Pass, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah, it's about an hour completion, isn't it? Something like that. Um, there's five chapters. Yeah. I think you, I think it's longer than an hour because I I did play all afternoon. So what I ended up doing, I I I go into the cloud, start playing the game. If I like it, or I'm popping a few achievements, which I'm there, what I was there for for to, to do. Yeah. I hate them saying that, you know. <laughs> and so I needed to do this month's achievements. I needed three achievements for this month for the yeah. continuation of my rewards that I'm I'm on a mission at the moment. You know, and, Steve, when it comes to achievements, resistance was futile. <laughs> it is, isn't it? <laughs> so, let me just go into Game Pass, actually, first. I... Yeah, that's one, one game I've been having a look at, thinking I might go for as my next 1,000 gamer score. Yeah, I, I, I'll need to go back and find out the other parts of it. So, basically, um, Miriam, she's a championship swimmer, and uh, a song from years ago triggers a lot of memories. Which embark on a journey through a, a turbulent childhood with her mother. There's no talking in it. There's only music. It's point and click and drag. I think is what I'd say. You could hold a trigger down, hit A, and you move things around to unearth yeah. the story as it progressed. Very relaxing. And I think I've got 390 achievements out of that out of the thousand. That's, so not, are, that's not bad. That's without looking at what they are. Yeah. And. Yeah, it's 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 a very I was very surprised. You know what he's like. I've got my three achievements. I'll delete this now and I'll just carry on playing Destiny. But no, I actually stayed to the end because I wanted to know what was all happen. I got to guess how this, this would sort of go. It's a very sort of emotional story with a with a as a child for a mother. Mm. Um, but yeah, it has essence of the quantum game. It's hard to explain what you see in it, but you know, it's quantum break. Quantum break. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. As in the way things move in the game, sort of thing. Because right, okay. she's always swimming. Because being a championship swimmer, um, it's all underwater in places and, and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's a good little game to play. It's only three gig, so it's a nice quick download. Or what I did was I just played on the cloud. Yeah, that's and one that of the was, great uh, advantages of Microsoft now is being able to play it on the cloud. And it was pretty seamless this time. I do have the odd day if the internet's having a bit of a mare. Yeah. But then it did say to me, do you want to download this game? You've been playing it for X amount of time. So I said, yeah, I'll download it. And so it's still on here. Yeah. So I might just go to YouTube and or if you found them out by the time I get to play it again for the next month to get my next set of achievements. Mm. I will do. Well, the, the easiest way is just have a look at true achievements. Yes, I know. I, I know. Do you know, I think the thing is, I don't even know where they are half the time because I don't actually look at them. What achievements? As in, when you look at them, uh, where are they? They're in the first page, which part of the... There we go. So I've got five of 15. Mm. Yeah, I knew there wasn't many achievements in there. Because yeah. they're all sort of like, or most were like 50 and 100, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they're quite chunky achievements as well. So from 30 to 80 to 90 to 100. Yeah. But I did, I did find a couple that it's, you know, I just did something and it popped up saying, you know, you've done this and that. Mm. But yeah, I will, I will save that game for the next, next part of my achievements I need to do. Because at the moment, I'm doing so I don't, so obviously there's a the reward weekly set. Yeah. And then you got the April in this case monthly bonus round, mm. which gives you two thousand points. So with that, you have to do some, you, you do your clicking on searches for, for Bing and, and what have you. Yeah. As well as earning three achievements in that month mm. for that, that one. So, so that's, yes, yeah, so that's what I've been doing. So I'm up to now 9,429 and I'm on a win streak, if you can call it that. Uh, what am I up to now? Just finished my 11th win streak or so streak anyway. So when I get to 20, it's 2,500 points. So it does bump up a little bit. Yeah, I must admit my um, win streak's been not working properly because I do all of the things on there every day. Yeah. At least at least the basic three <clears throat> uh, that are all on there. And um, 
after a couple of weeks, it keeps resetting me back down to zero, and even though I don't miss anything, which is really so, doing my head in. So what I so what you have to do is you have to go on your phone into rewards on your phone. Yeah. So there's three things they want you to do on. You can do on the on the Xbox. No, I so, sorry, I mean I mean on the daily stuff that's on you know on your dashboard or on your uh, you know that you do from Bing and stuff like that. Well, yeah, the Bing one is you've got to do so many clicks on PC and, and mobile search and Microsoft. But I do those anyway during the day for work and all sorts that so I'll be yeah. using it. But there's three little things you have to do, which will be like do, there's a poll every every day. There'll be a quiz every day. Yeah, do them all. A, do them all, Steve. I've been doing it for years. <laughs> and yeah. But, but what, it, I notice, but, but what I've noticed occasionally, which is really weird, is I do the quiz and then come out and it won't register it. Yeah. And I've done that a few times. Yeah. And, and when it doesn't register it, that's when I get prompts, even though, even though sometimes it said it's registered and it shows it's ticked. And then the next day I'll go in and it's reset my count back down to zero. You see, I always check. So I'm on, I'm on a 76 day streak at the minute. Yeah. <laughs> every so every midnight click turns i'll be on there just doing those three but you can do them on the xbox anyway yes it said i'm on five but i haven't missed a day in doing this in two years yeah and i don't so, understand why mine keeps resetting it's annoying yeah i think there's a glitch somewhere but you just have to make sure it's done but you can go into being on the xbox and you can do them there can't you so yeah, you might yeah. It might be worth doing them there to at least worst case is log those three, isn't it, for the streak? Mm. So anyway, anything else you want to talk about? Any games you want to No, that's about look, it look, really. Looking forward to Star Wars at the moment. Yeah, that's my uh my next big game, I think, is uh the Lego Star Wars game. Mm. I always like that. I think that'll be one that me and my son will uh, have a go on together. Cool. Okay then, so we'll um, we'll go then straight into movies, TVs, and streaming. In quest of a better life. Okay, so we've got a couple of stories this week. Yeah. One, not not two good ones really. No, I mean. I mean, I the first just, one is about uh, the sad news that Bruce Willis's family have announced that the actor of many great movies, including The Fifth Element, Pulp Fiction, Die Hard, and Die Hard is uh, retiring from filmmaking due to a diagnosis of asphasia. Which I don't think a lot of people know what it is. I have to look it up. Well, I'm going to come on to that. So asphasia is a language disorder caused by damage to a specific area of the brain that controls language expression and comprehension. So asphasia leaves a person unable to communicate effectively with others and asphasia is also caused in many people as a result of a stroke. Depend upon the condition, it is possible for people to recover their ability to communicate with treatment, but this isn't universal. Some other famous act, uh, actors, such as Sharon Stone, has had a, a brain aneurysm in 2001 and experienced uh, speech issues, including asphasia and an ongoing stutter. And um, Amelia Clark survived two aneurysms after finishing the first season of Game of Thrones, uh, the first of which left her with asphasia as well. Mm. So he's in good company, but it sounds like this is kind of like it's not going to be one that's going to be easily uh, fixed for him. And But he's in his 60s, isn't he, Bruce? Yeah. I just think it's a real shame that if you don't want to give up acting, that you your medical condition has to put you into that position yeah and i mean let you know let's face it you know he's he's not the massive star that he was in the 80s uh you know and he's you know that his film career has been uh, a bit Very of a checkered. roller coaster <laughs> i was gonna say a bit of a roller coaster ride in terms of uh, some of his movies uh but you know he's he's 67 he's a hollywood legend and it's just such a horrible way for you know someone who's been so loved by us all mm. uh to go you know right for, you know i've i've been a fan of him since the days of moonlighting with sybil shepherd 
Yeah, and we all. You know. Some people can say, what's that? Well, that was a TV show back yeah, in the day. that was the show that made him famous. It was. Uh, and then he moved on to the movies. And, you know, one of my favourite movies ever, Fifth Element, and the best Christmas movie ever, Die Hard, you know. He's a star <laughs> of both of them. Yeah. And my my favourite Tarantino movie, Pulp Fiction. Yeah. So, and, but the thing is with him as an actor as well, even though he was a big, you know, a big blockbuster sort of star. Yeah, well, he was a part of the big three, wasn't he? Because in the 80s, um, there was himself, Stallone and Schwarzenegger that that joined forces to open up a restaurant chain. Yeah, Planet Hollywood. Yeah. yeah. And but, <clears throat> you know, what I, what I was, uh, you know, sorry, I've lost my train of thought now. Uh he what he did what he did was in his career mm. is he'd take on the big multi million pound you know contracts, but then he did next to nothing in a, some sort of like obscure indie movie that very few people saw. Well, he's sort of the video on demand films, isn't it? Yeah, so he's he's done all sorts, and but then he know, did, but he's in like he did, um, so you said Sixth the fifth Sense. element, and I think Six Sense was a cracking movie. Oh, yeah, that that movie that is the only movie I've ever watched immediately again <laughs> because I'd never, you know, I mean, nobody had ever sort of like heard of M. Night Shyamalan back then, mm. and uh, or you know, I was used to his sort of like movie style. And yeah, I just sort of like watched that movie, sort of, you know, brain disengaged, blah, 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 just taking it all in, enjoying the movie, which mm. it was a great movie. And then you find out what happens at the end. And I always went, no. And I switched the movie back on and watched the whole thing again and watched every scene and studied every scene. Exactly. You do that, And I came you? out, wow, I was not expecting that. That was to be honest, that was the last time I remember having a wow moment at the cinema. Mm. I mean, like a real, I didn't see that coming at all. Yeah. But when you then rewatch it a second time and you see him talking to his wife, when she, he's not actually there and, you know, it's very I, I heavily would, done. I, w- I would say that, that that movie was shot perfectly. Mm. And then after that, he then went on to Unbreakable. Yeah. Which was another great movie but by the time <coughs> that movie come out i was used to his style of movies i got where he was going with it yeah and, and, I, 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 and i and i <laughs> i spoiled the ending for my wife about two minutes before it happened i think you did didn't you yeah yeah so I, I, did. Telling me that. I, I did i did yeah i, I said oh, and it's, yeah and then there's, there's other films i mean I, I, I know some people give it a bit of a hard time with tony scott but i love armageddon don't, you know, I I could do it that in 4K, thank you very much, if they could do it. Armageddon is just one of those, it's a, a popcorn um, sort of feel-good mm. joy ride. I mean, it's such a good car. I mean, uh, Bruce Willis is in it, but then there are all the people behind him that's in it as well. It's an incredible film, you know, from the the members that, the cast members that are in it, you know? Yeah. It's one from... of those movies you just don't want to miss a thing. Oh, God, please. <laughs> But you know you got Batman in it, haven't you? For example, <laughs> there was Batman at one point. It was in it. Yeah, um, it's it's a it's a great movie. Um, he's yeah he's done some turkeys, but he's done some really good. But doesn't everyone know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, is that my phone? Probably I mean, it's it. like um, you know, all of the Die Hard movies. Die Hard one and two, they're both as strong as each other. Mm. Um, Three's all right. I I really like three. As a matter of fact, mm. I would say out of all of them, probably three is my favourite Die Hard movie. <clears throat> um, Die Hard with a Vengeance. Yeah. But yeah, such a shame. And then we also got the news that the Foo Fighters drummer Taylor Hawkins had died at the age of fifty. Mm. So uh, the Foo Fighters announced that uh, the lead drummer had died. No cause of death was given. In the band's message, uh, Hawkins evidently joined the band in 1997 after they previously touring with the Canadian singer Alanis Morissette on one of the stars, our biggest stars of the 90s back then. Yeah. Uh, the band uh, currently in uh, Bogota, the capital of Colombia, as part of their tour uh, that was set to head to the UK this summer with uh, stadium shows in 
London, Birmingham and Manchester. So be interested to see how that's going to affect the uh, uh, those. I can't see that they'll cancel them, but they'll they'll have to get someone else in, won't they? Well, there there are drummers out there that could probably fill. Yeah. yeah. Not that they were ever thinking that that was going to be the, that was ever going to happen, um, but. I'm just saying, just for example, that drummer that was in playing with for Simple Minds, she was uh, an amazing drummer, honestly, absolutely mm. incredible. So there's lots of sort of musical artists that sort of work the same way as some doctors do on because in hop they call it, I think they call it something, something like that. Yeah. But they're like freelance, don't they? But um, yeah, real shame. Yeah. It's not really good. I'm sorry you made me laugh then because you were amazing. You went so high up that all the cats and bats could be in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. I mean, she was brilliant. I just, I, I did she actually send amazing. her. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Um, That's a good one. So, cinema releases, shall we do? <laughs> yeah, I tell you, I'll do them and then you can, you know, you can do some releases. I'll do I'll the Blu-ray. Okay, so on the 8th of April, we've got Fantastic Beasts, uh, Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore. We have The Outfit and uh, Murina. And then on the 12th of April, we have The Curse of the Kennedys. And then from the 15th, we have The Lost City, The Northman, Father Stew, Operation Mincemeat, and on order, 10,000 Nights in the yeah. Jungle. That's why I, they were awkward to say. Do you know That's what? why Steve didn't want to read out those. That's no, it wasn't. It wasn't. I was no, no, just thinking. So, I'll, we'll do. Let me do the um, the Blu-ray. Then I want to talk about something. Okay. okay. So, so Blu-ray DVD releases. So I've, we got highlighted ones here that how we look at it. But then I look back and see what else we got. So Jack Reacher 4K Steelbook Edition. We got a a, for, a spread of Spider-Man No Way Home. We got. I thought you were going to say a Ferengi of Spider-Man. <laughs> So we've got the 4K Steelbook Amazon exclusive. We have the 4K Blu-ray DVD. We've got the triple pack as well in Blu-ray DVD. Um, and what is that one? They've got No Way Home, Blu-ray and Funko Pop Marvel Doctor Strange. And also the last one again is a Pop Marvel of MJ. Mm. Plenty of all different types there to, to pick up. Anything else in there? Because that's all you've highlighted. So let me just quickly have a bit of a browse. And while I'm having a quick browse... We, we haven't we've got to speak about will smith haven't we we've not mentioned that do we really have to talk about will smith or do we think that maybe no i just wanted to death? Death. no i mean come on everyone else would be mentioning it i just want to <clears throat> yeah okay so will smith punched chris rock. chris rock yeah because he took the make out of his wife's well no alopecia. no I, I would say he didn't take the make out of alopecia he said that because she's bald yeah, he turned around and said, I'm looking forward to G.I. Jane, Jane too. Jane too. Um, yeah. To which he was laughing and then she went a face like thunder. And then the next thing was, he's walking up there, he slaps him and he goes and sits back it, down. Do and then he sits down and says, um, a few stop expletives. having the, my, my wife's effing name come out of your mouth. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm going to say this is going to damage his career. Yeah. Well, no. he's, he has resigned from the academy. And Netflix have postponed the shooting of the, his latest film. Yeah, all of, all of that will, that will still restart because he's too big a star. Yeah, but I, I I get it and I don't get it, but I think there's a, a time and a place. Yeah, I mean I'm not being funny, <laughs> but when, oh, when 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 he when he hit Chris Rock. Yeah. Yeah. It I'm was more. T- it I was st- more like a slap. It wasn't like a man punching a man. No, because he, well, like, he probably could have gone to the floor for that. You know? Yeah. But yeah. I mean, I, I mean, it was it was a slap across the face, uh, for and it, you know, for want of a better term, by the way, I'm saying that. But um, yeah, it, I just I uh, by the look of it, I mean, from what I can gather, he's really, really his family has had a lot of criticism being angled at him recently. I think he's just lost the plot. And I think he made a very, very bad decision. But what walking up, walking out of his chair, you mean? Getting up, going and doing that. Yeah. Anybody should have had the common sense to know you don't physically assault someone. 
whether or not that's you know giving well, a slap or whether or not that's they were trying to get him to leave weren't they and he said no i'm not going to leave this is before he picked his oscar up yeah but yeah because then he got a standard ovation for winning the oscar it's sort of like really i mean the thing is is they are and as he said in his own speech they are in uh, a, a profession where people will criticize them granted it was chris rock yeah, can you imagine if imagine if imagine if Ricky Ricky Gervais was doing that. Ricky Gervais was doing it all of the time. Yeah, it was sort of like you know, but he but Chris also Rock Chris back. Rock is a comedian. I know we see him in the movies, but if people didn't realize he was a comedian first. He still does stand up, and yeah, he, he he's showed not it a very was, funny one. That's the problem. I don't, I don't some bit. I mean, his stand up show. They do all the news reporters outside there just a couple of days after the after the Oscars. Um, if I take on this. Mm. is um, respect to uh, to him for standing up for his wife. Yeah, completely understand. His wife was upset because of what was it. He stood up, you know, he did something about it. He made the worst decision on what to do he could possibly have done. Um, he should not have, you know, assault is not the, the way to do it at all. Whether you're, you're slapping someone or hitting them or matter, whatever. It doesn't matter, it, it, or even physical abuse, which we did do as well. So Phys- physical or verbal abuse, any yeah. any sort of abuse, it's it's <clears> not <throat> on. No. Let's face it, all of these actors, they know that they've won before, you know, because it's all very, you know, oh yeah, oh they all fancy that because they're all prepared. I, well, we I know don't. That. They're all prepared. Yeah, but they they still. I don't think they still don't know who who's in the envelope. Uh, but yeah, I reckon they probably do. I, th- I think that those days of, of it, you know, it, I think it's all prepared now because you don't get that situation where you see somebody shouting out expletives at the table when they're being filmed mm. and, and they've lost. You know, I think that it's much more controlled these days. But he'd had, he would have had opportunities to address that at various different other sort of ways. He should have been more controlled about it. He's a public figure. You know, people look up to him as an as an icon. Yeah. You know. He, I, I, I know what you're saying. Is personally, I think he was wrong, full stop. And I don't. I know. I understand where you want to protect your wife, and that might have been a bit sensitive. I, to, but I think he should have just bit bitten his lip and then left it at that, and then maybe spoke afterwards. If he yeah. To. That that's what I'm saying, Steve. I'm not saying. You know, I said I I, I agree that he stood up for his wife. How he did it was totally wrong. That's yeah, what I'm, yeah. totally inappropriate. Yeah. yeah, totally inappropriate. Do you understand what I mean? I'm not mm. saying he was right for for physically assaulting someone. That is never the way. Mm. <coughs> he should have addressed it outside with the papers and said that you know he's uh, you know whatever and you know gone about it that way and put a complaint into the academy. He should not have done what he did. It was no. absolutely stupid. Mm. But you know. He's obviously, you know, evidently had it, had enough of that. And if that's the case, maybe time to look at another career, because if he can't take it anymore, <clears throat> yeah, it's it's not going to stop, is it? Let's face it, people are going to criticise him. Yeah. But anyway, I just thought I'd wanted. I just wanted to just just you know just mention. I think and this was no April Fools. As much as when I saw it, because I saw it. I heard about it in the morning, but took a blind bit of notice because I was busy with work. And when I got home, I played the video. Excuse me. And I thought, oh, this has got to be a wind up. But some people still think it might have been, but I, I don't know. I mean, if it, if it was going to be a wind up, you wouldn't have swore and said what you did. No, I don't. I, to be fair, I don't think he's that good an actor. Well, I do like I do like some of his movies, and you do too. So yeah, I do, and I'm not I'm not you know I'm not saying I, I don't, but uh, he's you know, not sort of like Laurence Olivier sort of standard. No, but he's a, he's a, he's a, I'm not going to say a Bruce Willis because he's not, but he's, he's just one of those generic action actors that does all sorts. Well, he's, he's primarily himself a comedian, isn't he? As in a comic actor, rather. Not a oh, comic. he has, he has done those yeah. roles as well. Yeah. He, well yeah. He's done all sorts, isn't he? He's, but he's, I mean, he's, 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 he's going more into drama now, but yeah, he, he's, he's 
He's yeah, always been he, a comic actor. Yeah, but he did stuff at iRobot, for example, which I actually I sat and was having my dinner and it was on. I just left it on and watched it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and, and you know... It's, um, and I Am Legend, which I really love that movie, and I've heard there's going to be a sequel. Yeah. So we'll see if that, that, that comes to fruition. But, um, yeah, but uh, just... And Men in Black, obviously, as well. And, you know... And, I, th- I think, if anything, I think the description would be feeling... Um, sorry that he actually lured himself to that. Disappointed in him, really, because I thought he was a better guy than that. But oh, absolutely, I totally agree with you there. Yeah, because um, I mean, this is this has made so much headline news. Yeah, it's un- unbelievable. Yeah, and, 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 <laughs> Did and you see it, his response. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, there's a few like that. I, I wouldn't have been taking the mick out of him. I would have been taking the mick out of his wife. I, I, I would be taking the mick out of his wife's hair. I'd have been taking the mick out of his wife's boyfriend because they've got an open relationship. That's what he said, wasn't it? Mm. Uh, but, uh, you know, you like to hear the news for the Oscars, for what the actual, what the Oscars are about and what movies have won. And... Yeah, you don't expect the drama to actually be at the awards ceremony. Yeah, and taking away from what you're there for. I just, I, I just think it's sad. I, I do wonder if we hadn't have had COVID and stuff like that, and you know, people hadn't have been locked up and not going to these sort of ceremonies, would that have happened this, in the same situation? Well, they're all sitting down there. If it was all at the front, weren't they? All the yeah. um, nom- nominated um, actors, you know, they're all nom- all sitting at the, you know, in the in the mosh pit section, if you want to call it that. Right at the front of the stage. No, what I, mean, what I mean is I feel like sometimes it feels like we've lost a little bit of social interac- interaction mm. and how people socially interact oh, in we have, large yeah. groups. I, you know, I feel like some of the etiquette and decorum that was there seems to have washed away a little bit. And I think that's probably an example of it. And it's, it's always, it's, I mean, the Oscars is very much a well-to-do affair. Very much so. It, you know, and if you go back over the years and, and see some of the other... It's the pride of the American movie industry, isn't it? It's their awards. Mm, that's right. Where we have some, we have something literally known as the BAFTAs. <laughs> yeah. Know, and maybe isn't as well known, but it, it's still a, the BAFTAs is a is a. I think it's well respected as well. Oh God, it is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, Just disappointed with him, but what yeah. can you say? So, film charts. You can do that. I'll do the Blu-ray DVD, and we'll keep it in sync. Okay, so official film charts at number five down from three is Clifford, The Big Red Dog. At number four, up from five is No Time to Die. At number three, up from four is June 2021 edition. At number two, staying at the same position is The Matrix Resurrections. And at number one, staying at the same position is Spider-Man No Way Home. I've always fancied just playing, just whistling the tune for Top of the Pops. When they yeah, the I, I always think that as well. <laughs> Anyway, Blu-ray TV charts. If we so, did it as a video, we'd need to have like the graphics and stuff like yeah. that. <laughs> I've got the, actually the music is actually a, an actual track. It's, I think it was Phil Lynn, might be Phil Lynn who did it. I can't remember now, but yeah, there is an actual track for it. But, uh, yeah. but one part. Anyway, at five, down from four, we have no time to die. At the top slot was June at one, down to four. In at three, Nightmare Alley. In at two, the Godfather trilogy, or should I say the 50th anniversary box set. And at number one, we have Matrix Resurrections. Because mm. there's so many few good movies <laughs> that are new out to buy, people will buy that instead. Well, yeah, but I probably will pick up the Batman at some point. That's probably, I'm sure I will do, but you're going well, to tell I'm me going to a little bit about, about I'm going to talk about that. Because I can't remember. Do you know what? I can't even think what I've watched this week. So you fill your boots on this and I'll sit and listen. Okay. I'll so give you a question or two. I'm going to say I went into this really not wanting to like it. Very hostile to the whole idea of it. Mm. Um, I gen- I generally don't like Robert Patterson as an actor. Uh, well, come on, you and me have only probably seen him in the Twilight movie. Yeah, I just, been lucky. I just feel like he was a complete wrong look for Bruce Wayne side of the persona. You know, he, he sort of like was very brooding and, to be fair, scruffy. Uh, which Bruce Wayne's a multi-billionaire who, to me, wears suits and, you know, is like the... And has ladies on his arms like he did in the Batman trilogy. Yeah, 
Yeah, he's you know, like Christian Bale version. That to me, he very much epitomised. Or even during the yeah. Bruce Wayne. Or even even before that with Michael Keaton, because he even though yeah. he was a yeah. bit of a nutter, he was one side of him was respectable as a. Yeah, exactly. You know that that to me is Bruce Wayne, a suave. He's like the American James Bond, but who is a superhero instead of being a double O agent. Do you know what I mean? Mm, That's sort of like the way that I always see Bruce Wayne and I have done always. Mm. Um, So, yeah, but I've got to admit, I actually kind of, by the end of the movie, I ended up liking him as a leaner version of Batman rather than the more fat man, bat fleck sort of version. (laughs) Um, So one thing I did find is while I uh, think he was good, I did found, find Andy Serkis really jarring in the role of Alfred to the point of it, you know, whenever he was on, he sort of like was jarring me back to this is a movie, you know, I'm watching Caesar from Planet of the Apes be Alfred. Mm. Uh, I mean, he did an OK job of the role, but to me, um, Bruce Wayne's butler is a sort of like, you know, British gentleman of a sort of like very distinguished look, which no no offence to Andy Serkis, but he doesn't have that look. And mm. I, I just found him uh, too jarring in the role, personally. I, more so than I found, um, not Michael Keaton, uh, Michael Caine yeah. as uh, Alfred previously. Mm-hmm. In terms of the soundtrack, there were some real diverse songs in here. I think it'd be an interesting one to get on CD or vinyl. The uh, vinyl got the vinyl got sold out within hours. Yeah, of yeah. Mondo when it was released, I've not heard it, so I don't. I can't but the Mondo it. ones is generally not the whole thing, and it's generally the. Well, this was, I think, a double album, so there was a. All oh, right, there was the whole yeah, mm. because there was a lot of sort of like more contemporary songs as well as uh you know one specifically done for so the there were some various artists involved in that yes yes but uh, but the, the songs were quite diverse and uh lots of different styles in there i did think that the there was some really good imagery which gave a nod to a lot of the classical sort of batman artwork as well mm-hmm uh, one thing I am going to say is, thinking forward, this movie is going to be a nightmare to watch on a TV with HDR, because even though HDR does do that whole dynamic range really well, mm. the movie was just so blubber dark. Even in the cinema, it was difficult to see some scenes on what was going on. <clears throat> it might be interesting to see what it's like then, when, when yeah. you get to see it. Yeah, I mean, overall, I would say I came away from this impressed with this as a movie. Mm. Uh, it was a more more of a deeper grit version of Batman, much like in the same way that the Joker was, uh, that the the character is more rounded in a more real world than comic book world. And I think mm. that could be reflected certainly in things like the Batmobile, which um, personally, it. yeah, it, it was more like, a, you know, a home tuned car. Well, it was, isn't it? You, I mean, I'm just looking at images now, actually. It looks like a Mustang or something, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it was definitely With a, more, a few little, few little tweaks. Yeah, like a jet at the back and stuff like that. Mm. It was, <coughs> it was a, yeah, it was a, it was a definite design choice. Was that? It was not in keeping with any other Batman movie because obviously you had the Batmobile, which has always been very iconic. Yeah, well, this, this is more of a looked, reinvention again, isn't it? With, yeah, uh, th- this definitely looked like uh, it didn't even look like somebody had gone to pimp my right. Can I, can I ask a question? There's only one question I want to ask about this movie. Yeah. Right, because again, we see this with Spider Man, we see it with Batman. Yeah. We, and now, what was clever? With some of them, is that they actually put it in the credits at the beginning, and you'll get the a, a slice of the origin of why and how someone becomes who they are. Do they do anything like that for this film? Not so much. Or was it at all in there? Um, without saying too much. No, I, I did. So, really, like within, like, so no, like, there wasn't, like, there wasn't, there wasn't the origin story in the same way uh, that it was referenced. Hmm. Um, in discussion more than what I remember than anything else but there was a young boy who was made an orphan who was 
by the you know when Batman um, looked at him, you could knowing the background to how the character evolved, uh, it the young boy that he kept seeing in various different scenarios mm. in the movie was very much used as an analog of Bruce Wayne when he was younger. So they did it in a different way. Mm. They didn't reference it directly. They did, and they didn't need to physically show you the shooting no, of his parents. They didn't do like. that. They mm. discussed about, I mean, a lot of the, some of the story <coughs> was about the death of uh, Bruce Wayne's parents. Mm. Um, and about how, you know, <coughs> how that came in with Falcone and stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, Falcone. yeah, Falcone, yeah. So all of that was in there, but it was more um, done through exposition rather than by, you know, proper acted out scenes. Yeah. But like I said, there was this kid who was this analogue for Bruce Wayne being a young boy. Mm. Um, I mean, what I would what I would say is that I think that this was a this movie was created about as far away as you could get from the graphic novels that you could, while still being very faithful to the source material. Mm. Um, it's more of a Batman noir rather than a campy version seen in the 60s, 80s and 90s. Yeah. But it's a well, different take to be honest, to I don't, I don't, sort of character. See, I, <coughs> excuse me, I don't class Michael Keaton as a camp, camp version anyway, personally. A little bit campy. Well, no, that's only... A, I would say not camp. I'd say if you're going to call it cheese because it was 80s, maybe, but definitely not Bruce, you know. Yeah, Bruce. yeah, I know what you mean. I think it probably went from cheese to camp <clears throat> over the course of four movies. Well, yeah, I don't, you see, to be honest, yeah, I know what you're saying by that, but then again, I don't, I, I have my misgivings about Batman 3 onwards from, you know, after Michael Keaton. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna say I think that Batman Forever gets a lot of stick and I think a lot of it is a little bit unjust. I thought Val Kilmer had really big shoes to fill against Michael Keaton, mm. and he did an okay job. And there was a lot to like in Batman Forever. You know, you had Tommy Lee Jones there as Two Face, um, and Jim Carrey as the Joker. And there was a lot of sort of nods back to the original 60s TV. But it was also where the camp really started to set in. And it was a bit of a rot. It was a bit like dry rot in the movies after yeah, that. Yeah, because when George Clooney did it, I mean, that is a dreadful movie. I'm sorry. <coughs> yeah. But but I know we're not here to talk about <coughs> that. But, it, but was yeah, I... meta, it was too meta at that point. That was the problem with it. You know, yeah. he's the Batman visa. I never leave her without it. Yeah, right. Okay, get a life. Yeah, it was just it's... pathetic. Yeah, but I mean, I like, I do like the idea of how this one's going. This one's very dark, so it's keeping him in, in, in sync. <clears throat> I, th- I think this is quite in sync with the Joker. Yeah, do you think they're gonna? I mean, oh, they're gonna. Are we gonna? Are we gonna see a couple yes. more? Do you think? Yeah, oh, definitely, absolutely, definitely. Mm-hmm. I do hope that somebody invests in light bulbs at some point. <laughs> I sounded like my parents. Oh, this movie's too dark, but it was. It well, was. some movie, yeah. But then again, <clears> saying that with HDR and black blacks, depending on your TV. Yeah, you but got. mate, you're talking about a digital projection in HDR, and it was dark. Well, I would look forward to seeing it on disc. I'm sure I'll purchase it anyway, and you will too. Yeah, it's definitely one that's going in the collection, but it was still dark, mate. Mm. Sorry, but that's just the way it is. But then again, I said, I funny enough, I remember saying this to my missus. It was one of the um, the Harry Potter movies. Yeah. I remember coming out. I, don't, I think it was probably maybe after the first couple. So it's when they're a bit much older, tail yeah. end of the story. And I just, I, I remember where we went to see it in Reading. And I remember coming out saying, do you know what? I said, that was a dark film. She said, what do you mean? I said, well, it was, it was I couldn't see a lot. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But I've watched them since on, on Blu-ray. Or, or, was know, that the Half Rail of Prince? I cannot remember which one it was, was it now. The one with, uh, uh, what do you call him, who was on Fifth Element, and it was Dracula, uh, Ullman. <clears throat> no, it was the, you know, the Harry, you know. Yeah, the no, yeah, I'm trying to remember which one, the one you I've got a funny, I'm, I think it was probably maybe the set, because the, the last two was one film anyway, that was just in two parts. But it's probably one further back from there, you know. Don't remember, the, the, I can't even off the top of my head tell you the, the, 
the actual um, titles of the movies, but yeah, it was I, I? I was thinking that the one with Gary Oldman was really dark. Yeah, but I just remember just you saying that. I just remember saying to my missus, "Do you know what? That was a dark film, literally." Yeah. Mm. So. So yeah, so that's uh, that's my opinions on the Batman. Pleasantly surprised. So we weren't going to get some sort of nice um, theme tune out of that, like we did for Prince or anyone else like that. There was nothing that I can remember that was sort of like that's the new Batman theme tune. So obviously, if the or even or even work, did who did was it Hans Zimmer did this? Was it by any chance? I'm going guessing now. I'll have a look. No, at no, idea, no idea. I didn't look. I'd have a look. So I'm curious now. Thinking of uh, Hans Simmer, how the hell did he win best score for June when it you was tell just me. one note going on and on and on? Mm. That was a complete fix. I'm sorry, but that was the worst soundtrack I've ever heard. How did he win? Got a lot of praise, apparently. Obviously, for people who were deaf. Hey, I'm not that? being funny, but that was not a soundtrack. That was some notes, single notes for the most part. <coughs> Toto's soundtrack was much better for June. Yeah, well, we both own that, don't we? Brilliant soundtrack. Mm. Anyhow, my other show uh, I'm going to talk about is Peacemaker. Oh, OK. Which is now available on Sky, Steve. And this is one you really need to watch. It's not on Netflix, though, is it? No, wrong? it's on Sky. OK. So... Rising out of the ashes of the car wreck, but strangely enjoyable, the Suicide Squad, rises uh, John Cena's Peacemaker. And all I can say is that I totally love this show. Mm. Yes, it's crude and it's rude in places, but it has a style of its own, uh, I do feel. Um, Cena plays Christopher Smith, the titular character of Peacemaker, Mm. who will kill any number of people for peace, no matter what the cost, uh, which is a somewhat flawed strategy, shall we say, to keep in peace. <laughs> Quite sure that there's a Russian leader he probably will get on well with there. Mm. Um, it explores <clears throat> some of the origins to Peacemaker while following on from the after effects of the Suicide Squad. And the show brings back a few side characters from the Suicide Squad as well, including Steve Agee as uh, John Economos. And Jennifer Holland as Agent Harcourt. The show's also got Robert Patrick as uh, Oggy Smith, Peacemaker's father, and also the character White Dragon. And Danielle Brooks, who was on Orange is the New Black as uh, Leota uh, Adebo, or Adebayo, rather, sorry. Mm. Um, so the show has what I will can only say is the best opening credit sequence of yeah, any you... TV show I've ever seen, which goes along to Do You Want to Taste It by Wigwam, which is a Norwegian glam metal band. And I know that it sounds like it should be like 80s hair rock, you know, down to its core, but it's actually off the band's 2010 album, Nonstop Rock and Rolling. Mm. Uh, and the opening <clears throat> sequence basically has all of the cast doing a, choreo- a choreographed dance to the music. It is absolutely brilliant. Uh, Eagerly, Peacemaker's pet eagle, because he's very original at naming, mm. uh, is a great sidekick and his totally, and his totally nuts friend, Adrian Chase, or Vigilante, who's played by uh, Freddie Stromer, who was on Harry Potter and the Inbetweeners 2, is also really good as well. Uh, the show is hilarious. It has a great story and you see a different side of the character from the movie and it's well worth a watch and is available now to stream all episodes on Sky. Um, and it also has a great couple of cameos from other DCU uh, cast on the last episode, which was so, so funny. Well worth a watch. Cool. Maybe I will get a chance to break away the um what my missus watches at the minute yeah just wait for your missus to go to bed and don't play destiny i know that it'll give you a nervous tick but don't play (laughs) destiny and watch uh watch this instead well you see i'm actually more to be honest i'm actually what i do want to see and we can't actually bloody see it 
Now, obviously, we've mentioned the motion picture last week. Yeah. But obviously, Strange New Worlds, forget Picard for a minute. I'm really, really, really want to see Strange New Worlds. And I don't know how we're going to watch that yet. Or has it actually been announced? Because it's on Paramount Plus, isn't it? It is. And whether Sky are going to have that sitting in early instead of summer, I don't know. Because if not, we're not going to be watching that unless you're going to find another alternative way of looking at it. I'm sure it'll probably appear on Pluto because uh, don't forget Star Trek. It's on Pluto. Yeah, but I re- I mean, that's using an app. I don't know what the quality is like. It's great. But I, the matter with it. <clears throat> yeah, but I really, you know, that... that that I, I'm really invested in that because I really want to, you know, get, going back to the original series. But I think, oh damn, you know, it's going to be difficult. I'm, I'm sure it'll be on uh, Pluto. I do, yeah, but it says Paramount Plus on the big and the big posters for it. So even in, on in that movie database, I was just looking. So we'll have to wait and see on that one. Yeah. Um, I'm just having a look on there now actually to see if uh, the. Got that scheduled. May the fifth. It's on. Um, it starts on Paramount Plus. Yeah, I mean, just quickly, what do you reckon? Just someone playing Captain Kirk in that as well? I'm not so sure. I, th- I think it's a mistake bringing in Kirk. Full stop. It's too. It... Is it? I mean, <clears throat> I'm trying to think in the timeline. Is it too early? <laughs> well, um, well. Yeah, it's eight years before. I mean, obviously, don't forget, because at the moment, um, Discovery is on right now, actually, on Pluto. Mm. Um, I, yeah, it's way too early, way too early, as far as I'm concerned. I, th- I just think it's uh, I, th- I think it's a joke, because this is ten years before Kirk appears on the Enterprise, mm. supposed to be. Um, so why is he on? Because he should have been on the... Um, Oh, I forgot what it was. The Farragut. Yeah. At this point in time. But we'll see. I mean, again, people do like to muck around with the, uh, these programs of old. It does annoy me sometimes. Yeah. I mean, they are doing a lot of retconning into Star Trek now to make the timeline go back to the way it should be. Uh, you know, so that there's a continuity with the original series, mm. stuff like that. And let's face it, the original series wasn't exactly made with continuity in mind. No, you well, know, it wasn't. It, it didn't know what it was going to be so many years later, anyway, did it? No, no. And I, 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 don't, that, even, I don't. I don't even think I might be wrong. Christine Chapel wasn't even on there, was she? But she's in the show. Was she? I don't think she was actually on. Christine Chapel was on the original series. Yeah, she was, but she wasn't. She wasn't um, involved during the cage. No, she wasn't. But this is after the cage. I know. Yeah, I know. But I'm not sure. Because the Hura's on it as well. Yeah, but there's never. I, 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 somebody doesn't make add up to me. I, I don't know. Um, we'll see. I mean, it's... I think they obviously feel like that they need a couple of other well-known characters in there, even if the side, more side characters like Nurse Chapel. Yeah. And then it's also playing into maybe some of that Kelvin timeline stuff of a relationship between um, Nurse Chapel and Spock. Yeah, because there was a thing there to a certain degree, and she's always looked after him, didn't she? Especially when he's going through his um, his, his uh, pond fire and all that and stuff that he was getting. He was really um, a bit of a mess, and she always would bring him simple meek soup or whatever it was, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, no, that that was yeah, that was Nurse Chapel. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but also Ahura was played musical instruments with it. You know, now yeah, the far out. You know, Return to Eden. Episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, re- otherwise titled Hippies in Space. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Anyway, should we um get to listeners' questions? Shall we? Yep. John, what's happening to us? Okay, so Mark has got two questions as usual. Thanks for that, mate. So his first one is, is there one thing that puts you off a game straight away? Yeah. I know you're going to say Bethesda. (laughs) Why am I pointing at you on the screen? I don't know. You can't even see me, don't we? (laughs) 
I was just about to say to wind you up as soon as it comes up. Produced by Bethesda. That puts me off a game straight away. Mm. I think Mark's put that in there deliberately. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> nice one, Mark. Is um, there anything to picture for game straight away? Yeah, if it's sport. Um, I think there are certain genres that put me off straight away. I think sometimes you think why what puts you off is why has that got multiplayer in it when it doesn't need it? It's a story based made game they're trying to Yeah. Um trying to use a sort of a cash cow to it, not <clears throat> trying to give it this or loot thing, box loot boxes is another thing. Yeah, the, the uh loot box well, a, any sort of additional payment is a is a put off <clears throat> in the game. Unless it's like really good quality DLC that's made ages later. Yeah. Um, like you know, some of the Mass Effect stuff. Um, that sort of thing puts you off a, a game if it's not done right. Um, I think lazy mechanics or overly complicated mechanics will put you off straight away. Bad well, voice acting. Soul games for you, definitely. Well, yeah, I mean, soul games aren't everybody's cup of tea. No. You know, it's like there's nothing to matter with that. You know, if, if people. No, no, like but it. it's asking the question: What puts you off a game straight away? And you know, it's like you know, Elden Ring would not be one I'd be purchasing. But, the, but that, that goes back down to the whole thing about genre. Doesn't and that's it? personal preference as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, there's, there's there's a lot of things, but in terms of this, this if if the mechanic is badly thought out, or if there is a ridiculous amount of grind. That was what lost me on Star Wars uh, Battlegrounds 2, was the mm. fact that it was, um, you know, they, they were trying to shoehorn in purchases and then you had to play for like a gazillion hours to get one character. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, and then you'd have to play another gazillion hours to get the next character. It's just that level of grind of no interest in. Don't have time for it. I'm, I'm not a 12 year old child who's avoiding their own work. No, no. So, what about you, Steve? Yeah, I mean, I'm, gonna say, I'm not going to say that, but um, I think I don't like the idea of trying to. Okay, There's like a good story-based game that you like, and they try and add a they try and add a, 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 a multiplayer part that just isn't going to work. Oh God, yeah. You know, they didn't need it for Tomb Raider, for example, or Resident no. Evil. I don't think they worked too well. Uh, yep, yeah, neither of those did. Neither did Assassin's Creed. Although no. it could be funny in parts. Yeah. Um, also, the price can put you off. Mm. You know. Um, what else would it be there? Yeah, I just a couple of things that just come straight to mind. I could joke about some other things that while well, they put me off, but I'm not going to. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, anyway, do you want to do you want to jump on to Mark's second question? Okay, so Mark's second question is: What's the best thing for you about being a gamer? And or being a gaming podcaster. I don't know, really. Keeps me out keeps me out of the wife's hair. <laughs> Maybe that sounds completely rude, doesn't it? Never mind. Uh, do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Keeps keeps you out of her way, doesn't it? Keeps you out of mischief. Yeah. Anything else? Don't know, really. I can't think of anything personally. What about you? I mean <laughs> be quite honest. I can't really think of a single good thing about being a gaming podcaster. <laughs> um, because I suppose what it would, I suppose one thing would be that sometimes you may have to maybe where you feel like you want to do this game, but there's a game I need to really concentrate on, or even, maybe even purchase that I don't want to purchase because it's a really big game and you want to give it some review or something. Do you know what I mean? Not that I don't think we're not not like that to a pass eight, but. Well, I mean, I, sorry, Steve, but unless you're telling me something that I don't already know, I'm not getting any free games. I no, buy we, we don't, and we don't at all. We do no. not anything. No, um, and that's that's the thing is, um, if if you're thinking, you know, it's all sex, drugs, and rock and roll as being a gaming podcaster, uh, it's uh, sort of like more like hard work, bead skin, and try to figure out what the hell we're going to talk about every week or every other week uh, is what it actually is. It's uh, probably more more stress than uh, anything else. Um, I think that the positive aspect is over the years we've built a community. It's not We're not a massive community, but we have a community of followers and 
we have you know we've established some good relationships with people uh as a result of that and that's absolutely yeah, but fantastic we, but we just enjoy doing it and you know from that point of view yeah i mean i i i still go back to years ago when we went to the star trek convention and i really apologize for uh our listeners uh not remembering our listener's name because um i to be honest if someone tells me the name i forget it before they've actually finished saying the name <laughs> um yeah we're not getting any younger mate yeah no i've been like that for years so I've, I've never been able to you know it's like if, if somebody tells me the surname i've forgotten the first name by the time i've said the surname um i always always remember us you know with that guy coming up to us a listener and saying are you hayden and steve oh i'm a listener when we were at the Star Trek convention, and it was sort of like William Shatner was 20 feet away from us, and we were sort of like <laughs> stood, sat, stood there. And I was thinking, I'm a fat dad from North Yorkshire, he's a fat dad from Southampton. What are you on about? Why are we famous? Sort of thing. It was a, quite a nice feeling for a moment, and I really appreciate him doing that. But uh, yeah, yeah, I just, uh, I would say for us, we get no benefit at all from being uh, podcasters uh, we just do it because we like why, to. Why, why the hell do we do it because people enjoy what we do and if people didn't enjoy what we do we, we won't do it. it yeah simple as that that's the only reason why we do it we get it in our necks from our other artists as well for doing yeah. it but also i think they kind of like like it because we're out of the way and i don't know she, where we are and they can get to watch netflix and do what they want yeah exactly so it works out all right for everyone and it does actually give us a little bit of time to get to have a chat about the latest gaming stuff which we do enjoy yeah um best thing about being a gamer playing games getting in different worlds different stories all that sort of stuff yeah just getting into your just being able to jump into a world that isn't the real world escapism mm. being someone else all cool stuff okay if we jump into Facebook, then we'll start with Paul Wilson. Did you enjoy your time at school or did you just feel like it feel like a chore? I hated school, but the last day I realised I was not ready to leave and ended up going back for one more year in the sixth form and really enjoyed it. I didn't do sixth form. Right. But I went straight into work. Um, I had some between some of the schools I went to because I did I did move in between for when the exam time was. Mm. And as in for your GCSEs and O levels and stuff like that. But yeah, it had its ups and downs. I don't really think I want to go into it right now with what had happened in school. But thinking about, you know, was it the best time of your life? Not necessarily so. It is necessarily so. Mm. But sometimes, some some of it was good, some of it was bad. But yeah, it's what it is. Well, I have to say, I absolutely hated school. Hated it with a passion. Did mm. not enjoy it. Was bullied at school. Was a social outcast. I was used to sit alone in the uh, uh, you know registration on a morning and an evening. Used to put up with a load of abuse. Absolutely hated it. I still went back for sixth form. Um, teacher. Yeah, but the reason why I went back to sixth form was um, I only came out with two O levels. Right. Because I did the last year of O levels. And I came out with two. One was in maths, and the other was in geometri- geometrical and ge- engineering drawing. Mm. And I certainly had no intention of being a draftsman. So uh, I stayed back and I started doing some A level uh, A level art. Yeah. Um, because I was always intended on doing that, and then re- reset my GCSEs. But I took the year. Uh, to make sure I really got them, got them all, mm. um, not a problem there. Um, but then I was, you know, I, that was in the June the next year. And then it was uh, the year after I started economics and maths and statistics, which is supposed to be the, one of the hardest day levels you can do, or it was back then. Mm. Um, I had some illness during the year, could not catch up. Um, I did my um what do you call it my a level art and after years of being told by your know, two years of being told by my art teacher um to i was uh you know second best in the class and stuff like that mm. 
because you you know what it's like you know everybody knows who the good artists is who the bad artists are and stuff like that and we all sort of like knew and agreed with what the teacher said well art is very subjective and all that I can say is that the person who marked my art did not like my art style <clears throat> and I came out with an N or a NIA, whatever it was at A level, which means I was better than an unclassified, but not as good as an F. Mm. Um, and uh, that sort of like broke me in terms of um, staying on for A levels because I was struggling with maths and stats to catch up from being off sick. Mm. Um, and so I left and I went to work and then I studied and studied and studied for years and I came I've now got three postgrads one of which is in teaching mm. um so you know I've I've you know I did a, all of my sort of like studying afterwards but I I think sometimes kids aren't ready for school in terms of the learning and I wasn't ready I probably I, actually, I probably enjoyed my my college days probably more than my school days yeah I enjoyed my sixth form days best Be- well yeah but they didn't really did they just dust didn't they Oh, uh, no, no, sixth six form was quite hard in terms of studying for me. Yeah. But I remember at one point I was going out with two girls in my economics class at the same time who were best friends and they both knew I was going out with the both of them. <laughs> it was the sixth no, I, form, I, it was the 80s, you did that I, sort of thing. Yeah, I, see, I was in a, I, I had a <laughs> apprenticeship and uh, I went to college one day a week and I didn't, they also went on a night as well. Yeah. So one night and one day. Yeah. But I quite enjoyed that. What I didn't like is that the idea of the night did interrupt my football because sometimes it was on a Wednesday and then Spurs were playing on Wednesday and I got a bit mixed and they really needed to go to the football. Sometimes I, I, I did play. You didn't live in Sheffield, did you? <laughs> yeah. So me travelling up on, on the, you know, sort of stopping off at Langley to go to college. Yeah. And carry on the Paddington and get up to White Hart Lane. But there you go. Well, Langley, that's a long way, isn't it? That's that near Washington, D.C., isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I t- I'll tell you one thing. One of my f- my most fond memory from mm. school, I'd been off for about three weeks off ill, and mm. I come back and I walked into the sixth form common room, and bear in mind, Banana Rama were in the charts at this point, mm. and back then, people still didn't use my middle name. Uh, so not my my the first part of my surname. People just mm. called me, you know, I was Hayden Jones, not Hayden Reese Jones, which is what my they should have referred to me as. Mm. And three um, of the girls in there, in the sixth form, who, shall we say, I, I knew quite well, mm. um, got up on a table, put banana armor on, and started singing Nathan George, you've been gone too long, but changed the words to Hayden Jones. <laughs> <laughs> that is my fondest memory of being at school. For some reason, I went from the most uncool kid in the whole school mm. to one of the coolest in a summer holiday and i've never figured out why that's the mysteries isn't it it is it is because you know I, to be honest i couldn't have even picked up a piece of paper when i was in fifth form when i got into sixth form wow it was a uh, different yeah see i didn't have sixth form i say i was by then i was at work and mm. well night clubbing and all sorts of yeah. <laughs> that from that point of view uh, but college was kind of, I was I did I didn't mind college. It was a day out day off from work and yeah, it was all right. With your castle, was it mainly males? What a college? Yeah. Oh, it was. Yeah, I, it's not that way now. There's, there's quite no, a few I know, but back then. Yeah, but then my apprenticeship as an electrician, mm. it was all all, all male male yeah. male orientated. Orient- it, it used to be very male orientated, didn't it? Mm. But now it's. Completely, the other, you know, there's a lot of women in, women that have had electrical apprenticeships and stuff like that. And it's nothing to matter with that. It's a job anyone no, can do. No, no. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, but I think all those all those tradesmen skills, if we class them as that, but they're all, you know, even though that was the way it was then. Practical hands-on sort of skills. Yeah. Yeah. It's all, you know, completely different now. But, uh, but yeah, it's what it was. Um you know, in my I loved my I loved my work and I enjoyed being a spark. So that was I had some great fun. I say that was I still I say as much as it's sad to say now that he's not here, but he he was my best boss that I had. And um, mm. I won't say what I found out recently because it, it, I don't think it's appropriate. But yeah, he passed away. But I just found out what happened and uh, I was quite shocked from that. Um, 
but yeah, it's uh, it was a great boss, and uh, you know, <clears throat> the days of actually writing in to get get a job interview with with a notepad and paper and, and sending it off in the post, you know. Yeah, God, I remember those. Yeah, yeah you write up loads. Yeah, but, I, uh, I I remember when I got called into what started off my career for the job because I was working as a telephone market researcher, mm. uh, just following up people doing telephone interviews. This is way back in the 80s this was like cutting edge sort of stuff back then mm. and uh i got told to go up to the top floor of the building because there'd been a phone call for me and it was uh for someone phoning me up to ask me for an interview and i was saying oh get away stop joking because i thought it was one of the lasses down in the in the ground floor why did me <laughs> up so no i'm sorry this is real and, you know we're offering you're offering you to come for an interview mm. like, yeah. but yeah no i mean it's it's um you know, and when I, you know, when I moved into different, different type of, of um, what's the word, different scope of work, and you know, I was headhunted for that, and they really, you know, I really appreciate that. Yeah. You know. So, yeah. Cool. Anyway, should we crack on? Yep. So Jason Toon has asked, uh, are games, movies, and TV shows being announced too early, and does the long wait only lead to disappointment? Where they finally do come out. I think the yeah. lead time these days has extended rather a lot compared to yeah. what you did, do, which is the only other problem. Mm. And I do like the idea of a game saying we're announcing it now, but you know what? It's going to be out in, in three months' time. Yeah. And, <clears throat> but sometimes they have to. <laughs> sometimes I think they have to give you progress and update reports on games that are going to be coming out in the future because. It keeps you interested in in, in that um, console, mm. but yeah, it's, it's it's a different world now from that point of view. I think. Yeah, definitely. But TV's the same. I mean, one of my wife TV shows, Grey's Anatomy, that we're watching. We was watching the latest season, and it suddenly stopped because of COVID again for a second time. And halfway through the mid season, that was it. They stopped filming. Uh, you know, but we're seeing TV shows and on Netflix and movies coming out quite regular now, aren't we? And <clears throat> things are going to pick up as we know and there's loads of good films to come out in the next year hopefully and games as well as long as they get, don't get delayed <laughs> yeah doctor strange and the multiverse of madness just around the corner yeah yeah morbius although i've heard it's absolute rubbish i didn't realize matt smith's in that yeah and i because i thought oh because i was looking into it but after we'd spoke about it mm. i got a lot of respect for him as well as, as an actor um but yeah, I'll have to listen to um, Ray Five Live on their film review on it. See what yeah. they thought. I watched um, the first episode of uh, Moonlight. You know the new Marvel movie, uh, TV series. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, with Jason Isaacs. Mhm. I want to watch more of it before I decide whether or not I like it. Or not. Yeah, I was, I was minutes. quite. It, it 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 deals with mental health issues. Mhm. Uh, in terms of the way it's portrayed in the first episode uh, because the character doesn't know what's going on and it's sort of like a multiple personality but it's not multiple mm. personalities he's got so I just want to see um, how it how it pans out but I quite enjoyed the first episode yeah um, I just want to see more of it before I can get a proper feel <clears throat> for the show Mm. Uh, but I kind of like feel it's not the blockbuster that One Division was. One Division was amazing right from the off. I think that uh, this one is a much more sort of like kind of Hawkeye, somewhere between Hawkeye and uh, um, Captain America. Falcon and the Winter Falcon, Soldier. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's sort of like somewhere in between there in terms of goodness. So, mm. uh, or at least that's my initial impression. <laughs> okay, right. Tim Walker says. He's asking, what games and consoles are you playing in your teenage years? Do you still play any retro stuff? Over to you, Hayden. Uh, in my teen years, Commodore 64, Commodore Amiga, Commodore CD32, uh, the old uh, Commodore Pong machine as well. <laughs> Played that, had one of those. That lasted all of four hours before it melted. Mm. Uh, this is teenage years, not about any other years. Cause yeah, I... I'm on about teenage years. Okay. MSX and bbc computers and mm. a lot of my time was spent playing elite of course it was uh back then but 
I literally have hundreds of cassette games. Mm. Uh, yeah, I still have. See, them, I, I think a lot of my teenagers, I was getting drunk and had a lot of women <laughs> at the time. But I did, I did pick up an Atari ST. Yeah, and was was playing some games on there, um, and then started. You know, then Sega came along, and there was the uh, was it the well, Mar- Sega must have been when you were in your twenties, wasn't it? Um, when did the Master System come out? Oh, Master System was about 84, wasn't it? Yeah. So the Master System came out and stuff like that. Yeah. Moving forward from there onwards, obviously. But but my teenage years, a lot of that was getting drunk and, and having women, I think. But it was there was that little stage in between. But I will say off air how I got back into gaming in a big way, but I won't say on stage yet. I won't say on here. It's not, it's not appropriate. Okay. <laughs> Anyhow. There were misses. <laughs> there were misses, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, last one. No, oh, not the last one. <laughs> We've got some more. Hold on. I'm Scroll down. down. <laughs> oh, yeah, blimey. It's nearly 10 o'clock. Go on. Yeah. So, uh, Craig Cole said, uh, what's your favourite monster movies? His top three are the original King Kong, The Thing, and Tremors. Okay, I don't think I'd put... Personally, wouldn't put The Thing as a monster movie, personally. I don't know. But it's sort okay. of like kaiju sort of thing, isn't it? I mean, I personally, for me, I'd say Kong, Frankenstein, and and where and the, and the Wolfman, sort of how I look at monster movies, the old Universal ones. Yeah, obviously King Kong was obviously, which is brilliant, and Frankenstein, Dracula, these are they, they were my sort of favourites. Yeah, um, what the original Dracula? Or yeah, the, on about the Bram Stoker's Dracula version. I'm, I'm going well with. Keanu, uh, you know, cool, I do, I, I, cool that, dude, sort of. British. I do, I, I do like that Bram Stoker's Dracula very much so. But from classic monster movies, I'll, 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 you know, there's like Frankenstein, Frankenstein, and yeah. Have you got it in 4K? What the Universal ones? No, the uh, Dracula Bram Stoker. No, I, I have got a copy on Sky that's that's, that's set there, but it is one to purchase. I've been booming and ahhing about picking up at some point because uh, it is a I picked it up, got it for a tenner. Oh, did you? What, on yeah. Amazon or? HMV. Oh, OK. Yeah, they have it on offer quite often. Mm, I'd have to look on their website if it's there like yeah. that. But it's just yeah. a, it's a fantastic, it's a really good Dracula movie, that one. Yeah. Um, I think for me, I love Tremors movies as well. I've got all of them. Mm. Um, even though not very good new ones. Uh, but I still love the Tremors movies. So they would be up there. The thing would be there for me as well. Mm. But if you want to call him a monster, I suppose technically he is. Uh, I would say Dracula, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Well, he is. He's, he's a part of the, the classic Universal one. <coughs> yeah, he is. In where, you know, Wolfman, Mum, the, um, the Invisible Man was also another one, I think, actually, as well. And uh, But yeah, you know, Kong and you know Frankenstein, you know, they, they're the classics. Yeah, yeah, they are. Um, I quite like the, was it 70s version of Kong as well? That was quite good, what I remember of it, for practical effects at the time. 70s? Oh, yes, there was, wasn't there? Yes. Yeah. 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 That, that was before the, um, you know, the... Jack Black version. <laughs> yeah, excuse me. Yeah, that Jack Black version. Yeah. But um, I also do like something else. I also, uh, I mean, you haven't even mentioned this, I'm surprised, is um, Godzilla. Yeah, I've th- um, never been one of my favourite sort of ones. Mm. Something I actually got I've got my eye on. Actually, I haven't bought a 4K movie for a little while now. Yeah. But there is the Universal box set, Frankenstein, the original Dracula and Wolfman. Yeah. But the, it's all about the HR, H, HDR in black and white more than anything else. Mm. Um, and of course, I, I suppose is that a, is Van Helsing a monster movie? Well, it's it's about a monster killer. It's about two monsters. We got you got Dracula in it. You got you got a werewolf. Yeah. What about Hellboy? Yeah, maybe, but he is a monster, isn't he? At the end of the yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. I just remember the ones at night that, when you was a little kid that used to sort of you know, I mean, monsters in Doctor Who would keep you know, his monster every week in there. <laughs> on a side note have you seen the trailer for the for the sea devils no yeah just brings back the days of a kid yeah no, i've 
I must admit, I'm really not that bothered. I just want them to get over this whole mm. period with Doctor Who. I just yeah. think it's yeah. it, it, it's a show that really needs to recover its ground. It will do. But anyway, as saying as a kid, do you want to say what? Do you want to? What's your turn? Oh, okay, yeah. hey, so, sorry, Scott. My turn. So Scott kisses. How do you see all digital future when Nintendo closes the DS store? I myself now going to buy more physical. Over to you, Hayden. I uh, as a Nintendo player. Yeah, um, I agree. That's why the majority of the software that I've bought on the Switch has been physical. Mm. I tend not to buy stuff off the store for that exact reason. So I just I, I disagree with them closing stores because it closes your door to being able to access your license to use that. But that's the thing you physically buy the media. But the problem is because it's cartridges, mm. uh, the connectors can wear and then you can lose the media that way as well. So you're never 100 percent. If you just disconnect your Internet from if you stay off that, that platform. <laughs> yeah. One little hint of a connection and it's gone. But that's the why that's the reason why DVDs, Blu-rays and 4K Blu-rays don't go away as well. Is because you get better quality on a 4K Blu-ray than you do on an ultra high def stream. Mm. Because you can have a hundred megabit rate on that on a uh, Blu-ray. You're not gonna get that streamed. You're gonna mm. get 30, 40. <clears throat> something like that even sky ultra hd doesn't compare to a disc but then again sky hd never compared to a blu-ray no i mean sometimes if you uh, to be honest looking at some of the quality isn't it's pretty close it's not far off it's not far but it's still off i mean if i was to have something there to 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 drag the information to actually read what it's what it's dishing out maybe you know yeah but Okay, last one. So Lee Doherty's asked, Hi fellas, after the last show, I tried Steve's Marmite humus uh, idea uh, and it was actually delicious. I actually told Steve about that, believe it or not. Actually, you didn't. It was one of my daughters. She posted it to me. Well, what, how, how, how come when I said, have you tried it? You said I didn't know that they did it. Oh, I don't remember. I remember my I... daughter actually posting it to me on a, on a, on a WhatsApp message. Yeah. From Tesco's, but anyway, okay. by the but way. You, you said to me you'd never heard of it when I said because I said it's in Tesco. <clears throat> uh, maybe, so, maybe, maybe it was. Yeah. What What other weird food combinations have you ever tried over the years? Did you ever try peanut butter and jam? Nope, because I don't like peanut butter and I don't like jam. I actually, I mean, in America it's peanut butter and jelly they call it, don't they? Yeah, yeah, they do. But isn't that bad actually? I have tried that. Um, although I could just get, a, I could get peanut butter. And just eat that out with a spoon. Yeah. Even more so when it's Marmite peanut butter. Honestly, Marmite. trust me, trust me, Marmite peanut butter. They do a bigger jar now as well, a massive big jar of it. And it's to die for. Just get your nachos in that. <laughs> I actually had some uh, Marmite recently and I've lost the taste for it. Have you tried to put it on an egg yet? No. I, 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 if you just get a poached egg and drizzle a little bit of Marmite on top, it's to die for, honestly. Sounds excited. Exciting it is, yes. <laughs> is it excellent? <laughs> <laughs> or just extremely good? You love cracking jokes, don't you? <laughs> yes, I, but I don't want to exaggerate them too much. No, no. <laughs> and I, I'll have barbecue sauce on just about anything. Well, people have got pizza these days, don't they? Yeah. Oh, well, you get pizzas with them on. Yeah, because, you know, instead of tomato sauce, you know, barbecue pizzas, Yeah, that you, you'll get that on. But, yeah. no, I mean, I'll have it on all sorts. Mm. Um, because I, just, I, you know, I just like the taste of it. Um, you know, so I'll have it like cheese sandwiches, stuff like that. I mean, Marmite and cheese sandwiches good. Yeah. It'll offset some of the Marmite. Yeah, <laughs> I, tell, I, tell, I tell what I do like to do. I like to, uh, we call it Welsh rabbit. Mm -hmm. So you get a load of cheese. And you crack a couple of raw eggs in there, mix the grated cheese up with it. Yeah. And you pour, pour it on the bread and put it under the grill. Yeah. And then you drizzle a little bit of marmite on top afterwards. Mm. That's good. I'll tell you what else is nice as well. You know, you were on about your marmite on in a, uh, was it a toasty or just a sandwich? A, oh, it might have been. Said, not, yeah, I, th I think you said a toasty, didn't you? 
Probably, yeah. 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 I'll tell you what is nice as well. If you have a cheese sandwich, mm. oh, sorry, cheese toasty, but you pour some um, Liam Perrins on it. Yeah. Is that a northern thing or not, that one? Is that a bit of a northern one? No I idea. Because so. Lee Perrins is made up north, isn't it? Isn't it? No idea. No idea, but it's really nice. I mean, Worcestershire really nice. sauce. I mean, some people don't have a spirit, pronounce that. Worcester sauce. Worcestershire not, sauce. It's not, no, it's not Worcestershire. <laughs> it goes, it goes to Worcester. Yeah. That again, Worcestershire. that again, if you if you mix a bit of that with the cheese and egg and, and another way and put that on top of the bread and put it under the grill, you've got, you got to remember to cook, cook it quite well because if it's too high on the grill, it will burn and also therefore yeah. inside the egg will not will still be mushy and not cooked properly so keep it on a lower tray down when you put it in yeah. it to cook it i'll tell you one thing i have found recently mm. and it is absolutely to die for i've got i've told so many people about it so we keep running out of it in our area now because everyone's buying it mm. and that is primulus bread but the jalapeno primulus bread is that in a toothpaste tube yeah Okay, yeah, remember that. It is oh. absolutely gorgeous. So I have that most mornings for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did. It's funny because I didn't get to eat at the um, Simple Minds concert because I was finished work and got back out again. Mm. I went upstairs. I could smell hot dogs in in the bed in Bournemouth, but there was nachos there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I had a shandy and some nachos with cheese. I just could have done with some chilies on. I don't. They didn't have jalapenos, no. And I could have done with some mints as well, because I did have that Saturday night, funny enough, after all met last week. Yeah. Mrs. was not in the mood for cooking, so I said, "Would you have nachos?" I said, "Yeah." I said, "Just make sure I've got some chili, and I'll be able to put that in the middle of the plate, and I can dip all my, my stuff in it." But yeah. Yeah. Nice. Crazy. Mm. Anyway, anything else? I think, I think that's it, really. I need to. Um... No, I think that's some good questions there. Thanks, guys. Really yeah, appreciate really... that. It's always nice to have questions in. We didn't have many last time. Well, we, we every two weeks they get a bit missed, probably. Yeah, probably. Okay, outro. Got it. All right, outro for today. <laughs> <laughs> so Twitter at Stevo07. Uh, the PSN ID is the real Stevo07. Xbox is again Stevo07. And my YouTube channel is The Vinyl Cues. Aiden. So for me on Epic, it's Pop Culture Gamers and on everything else. So that's PSN, Xbox Live, Steam, Twitter, you name it. It's H-E-R-J UK. Don't forget, you can also follow the show on YouTube.com forward slash Pop Culture Gamers. Uh, got some videos that I'll be posting very shortly of some new tech bits on there. Uh, Twitter is Pop Culture Gamer, our Facebook group. We also have a Facebook page. You can email podcast at popculturegamers.co.uk and there's our website, anchor.fm forward slash popculturegamers. And actually, after years, people have actually started using that podcast at Pop Culture Gamers. <laughs> I've been mentioning it for so long, never had a single email to it. And now all of a sudden, say, we get two or three a week in there. There you go. Also, don't forget this Discord as well. Yes, there's our now a new Discord server for pop culture gamers as well. So you'll find us on that as well. So, as we normally say, it's a good night from me. And it's a good night from him. Good night, guys. Good night. <laughs>